power of attorney, though, if I go beyond the scope of my power of attorney or I do things that aren't for the benefit of the principal, then I violate my fiduciary okay. duty of loyalty. Which I makes total pay. sense. She said, I would get a power of attorney if this is how you want to go, because the way he handles his finances, you don't want to be viable for him. You may also have you want to put a limit on him. Okay. You, so, uh, put I, a limit on I have, and I took his credit limit off and all that stuff, but yeah. they can turn around and put it right back on. You know, they get in a pinch and they do whatever they need to. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay, this one here. That's that old 1983. The flood. Yeah. And we still are showing that. Yeah. Yeah. We took out 120 bucks, 120,000 out of it. So I don't understand this one, why that's still showing up that way. I just realized it today. So I just thought she's not doing anything. If you knew anything about it. No, I, it wasn't higher than that before. No. That was the original amount. And we took it out and spent it all on emergency preparedness, right? So that should go back into the general fund if they haven't, if they haven't done it. Unless they've got to put this somewhere. So it's just going to be some more stuff that I keep looking at. And whatever happens to these, it will be at our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. 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 Going someplace fun? Being Florida. Good. Carter Florida. I don't know that. Down on the pan. Mike, Robert, Destin. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Whatever happens to the impact fees? Whatever happens to them? Mm -hmm. The what restricted funds. Like after they're, they're can, collected or what do you think? Yeah, talking? we have Yeah, they balance. sit in as a balance. They do. And what are they for? Um, well, there's multiple funds because there's a there's regional and community park that are two separate funds. There's there used to be an EMS, but that's gone now. Because you've got community development, parks and recreation, public property. And then you've got impact fees, $610,000. That impact fee should be the you know, the parks ones. And they can be spent on items Park, that are on our short-term capital property facilities plan. Correct. It could be what? They can be spent on items that are on our short-term capital facilities plan. And if they're not spent within six years of payment, they should be rebated to the parties who paid them. So, like the pickleball courts were built with those funds. So, what about the parks, rec, and public? That's six hundred thousand too. Yeah, we've got a million two hundred thousand. Parks, rec. Yeah, we got parks. Well, I think you charge a public. transportation impact fee too, right? Well, we got a safety one too. Public safety three hundred forty-seven. Community development six hundred eighty-four thousand. Yeah, that's our fund balance. It's been building over years and years and yeah, years. Yeah, I know. If we had six years to do it, we've got to take care of it. No, that, that's, it. Not, that's not an impact fee. This is. That is, but the other, right. the, but these like are community all development is not an impact these fee. Are all yes, these are all funds. restricted. Yes, these are all restricted. I'm surprised I guess there's that much in the parks, public property. And didn't we just authorize an expenditure based on one of Commissioner Anderson's motions from the park impact fees? We did. Yeah, that we was that went twenty-five thousand towards the. Is that what it came out of, though? It, should it was have. out of the short-term community development or the impact I, fees. I, I should have come out of impact, impact fees. fees. That's what we authorized. Okay. But I don't know what the difference on our else. sheet is between impact fees and parks, recreation, and public property. We, we need to figure out what that. Okay. I'll keep working on it because there, this, there's, there's this one. Fund. That hundred and twenty-five or hundred twenty thousand dollars isn't hasn't yeah. been transferred either. Hasn't been transferred yeah. out. Are we surprised by that? I am. <laughs> I'm not at this point. Considering. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But you're right. Hey, Lilia. But at this point, that stuff I is my granddaughter. If you want to sit back by her, it'd be point. great. Because all it's going to do is, <laughs> yeah, maybe she sits right behind out of the general fund budget last year. <laughs> That's all right. She just wants to be there. Oh, the only thing yeah. that concerns me is this wedding. 
people see it, they're going to come back. They come back. Europe. That's right. So we probably ought to transfer that. Yeah, yeah. If it goes into the. Uh, unless or where if we've is, got another project. We where is our, our, our where is our flood money that comes from the taxes? The one that comes specifically uh, flood and disaster. That we that's have. it. No, Isn't it? because no, that one that's has not, not the, changed. That's, that's not, not the 1984 no. one. The one that we get on our property taxes that we get taken out the line item. It should be know. under the same section. It's not there. Restricted. It's not there at all. This one is the 1984. That's the 84. That's fund. the 84. Fund. But there is another t uh, another fund that gets funded. You're right from that. It's not a ton. It's like twenty thousand dollars a year. Or so oh, it's it goes about three hundred to more thousand dollars. Well, the fund's built up, but I'm yeah. saying what goes into it is not much. We haven't yeah. touched it in a long, long time. That's right. But you know when we had. That Although we talked down, about touching it to, to get that bridge and Peterson that's right. taken care of. And we ought to do. We ought to follow up with that. The other thing I want to look into, and I haven't done yet, is. Um, to see if we can use ARPA dollars on the, the new bridge in Croydon, because our match is almost four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's only six percent. Do you guys know your life? Because that just keeps going up. Our life. So we need to talk about that. If we can use ARPA for the um, Jeremy Oh, okay. That one. That's fine. Anyone can hear what we got to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't have anything. <laughs> Okay. I saw Jared come in. Does he? Yeah, he's here. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. All righty. Do you want to do that first and then yours after? Okay. Lydia, let's go to you first. We'll talk about uh, the Recreation Park Department's new behavior policy. Sure. Um, and I won't have lunch, so just... <laughs> so it's this document, right? Yes. That we're looking at. Okay, perfect. Oh, the work session. It'll be really low key. I want to be recorded. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is basically just. I deal with a lot of teenagers, and sometimes teenagers need reminding about what exactly I expect of them when they are wrecking. So this is basically just a. You need to show up. You need to tell me if you're not going to show up. Please do not eat while you're refing. Please do not play on your phones. You're in charge of filling out your own time cards, and they have to be signed or you won't be paid. All of that. And then uh, if you don't, I that is term, you know, grounds for termination. So I just want to be able to hand it to them so that they, because I tell them verbally, but it's not seeming to stick. <laughs> the one that we actually create that you can have, they'll put their signature line on it. Okay. So they have to sign to agree with. That would be great. Is that this one? That one has our yeah, so this okay. is what I want to hand my teenage refs. Yeah. I very clearly say what I expect of them. And I mean, we, we haven't had a chance to fully review this, but Julie, I assume you have. I have. Yeah. Is there anything in here that you feel like would be contrary to what's in our current policies? It looks pretty... It's pretty, pretty straightforward in the sense that it's letting them know that it can affect their job, but that's what she needs to let them know because of thing she's already been taken advantage of and life is hard for her. And <laughs> I read through the whole thing. I didn't see anything that yeah. raised any red flags to me. It's pretty simple for me. I did alter the very first paragraph, but I just took we out and made it more generic to the camp. Hi. And then made a little couple of corrections. I did notice under um, personal phone calls, visits, and business, it says the company expects the full attention. I, uh, I don't know if we want to change that to the county yeah, or, the county or, or the Morgan county. Recreation or I don't know. Yeah. But I actually changed that's a simple thing. Yeah, I mistyped that one because <laughs> all the others say the county. Yes. This is a work session item. Are you looking for and and just kind of a thumbs up and then bring it back for a final approval, or what's your what's your thought on this? Um, if, if Jared and Matt have had a chance to look at it and they feel good about it, we just want you guys to have access to it and 
I, mean, I, I always love the attorneys to look over the wording, but. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize. As in a previous meeting, um, this is for teenage refs, correct? Yeah, I, I emailed this to you yesterday. You did. So, I'm just saying it publicly. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. for yes, these it's are for, for teenage refs. These are for teenage refs. Um, how do we? I have a tough enough time. Um, telling my teenagers to do things and make sure they get done correctly. Um, what's the thought process on if it's not abided by or if they don't follow it or so, if they do something okay, against so this? What it is is that like, I talk to them about what I expect, but then kind of as seasons progress, a lot of times they will get lax. And so if I have some sort of documentation that I can come to them and be like, hey, you remember how you signed this thing? Like if you don't follow this, I can fire you. Basically, because what happens is that I have kids that want to come back from previous seasons, and I'm like, you know, you didn't get off your phone last season. I don't really want you to work. And they're like, oh, I didn't realize that was a thing. I'm like, we talked about it, but I had like a signed paper, you know. So I like, agreed, no, to you this, agreed to all this. these. You agreed to this. Sorry, you can't work for us. Anymore. So in this document, you will have a place for them to sign it. Yeah. So instead of your guys' signatures at the end, it'd be theirs and mine. So that I can then say, well, no, you signed it. Sorry, you remember how you didn't get off the phone. I didn't know if it needed to be signed off on by you guys, but I always think that's a good idea. So sorry. And I think it maybe will scare the kids a little bit more that like, look, here's an official document that says if you don't do this, you won't have a job, rather than just me being like, come on, guys. Well, one thing they don't maybe think about is that they're representing the county. So I added that sentence in to the, one of the very first sentences to let them understand that this is expected of them because they're representing the county. Yeah, I, you could take out the three timeouts before I write you up stuff. I'm kidding. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. I think those kids need to learn that. That's yeah. that's what the that's what the work place. I don't is have about. a horribly high expectation of them. They're 14, but I I do need some sort of. I do, and I I realize too, it's not easy to get people to do that all the time. So you have to kind of. Juggle that. For the most part, they're great. I just think it's so. I, but I do think it's good to have kids uh, sign something that says "I understand," so they yeah. can't say "I didn't understand." Yeah. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Thanks. Okay. So just wants okay. to have Garrett go over it and then bring it back next time for our signature. We've got one thing yeah. here. I think if we're gonna officially adopt it we probably just like our handbook we ought to have it come back but let's just have Garrett look over it make sure he's good with it you have one here it says minor cuts and abrasions should be treated on the spot typically typically by the school nurse are all these places oh yeah, I mean oh is this something you use from somewhere else okay do you want that out yes <laughs> okay. okay I wasn't sure so I by the supervisor okay <laughs> that might be a better thing but yeah, what if there's no supervisor there. around um, all of our fields have supervisors. Okay, all right. Where was that? The very end. Safety Yes, just above the signature. by the... I adapted it from like four different things. So <laughs> I'm not sure I've changed that. Supervisor, then. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Any work-related injury or accident, no matter how minor, is to be reported. And yet you're talking about minor scrapes and cuts and abrasions and that kind of stuff. Um, Do we want workers' comp? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just know when I was in the workplace, if I got a paper cut, I was not going to go to my supervisor and tell him I had a paper cut. So. <laughs> yeah, but if a kid, like, for example, we had a kid cut his hand on one of our stitches. No. And it might seem like, oh, it's no big deal, it's just a cut, but it's like. Yeah, it needs to be reported. Or it's like expected, yeah, or like I just kind of need to know about that. Right, so minor cuts or and abrasions. Or if he's not operating the pitching machine correctly, and that's why he got cut, like. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. I know. She should know of any incident so they can't come yeah. back later and say. Unless it's like a paper cut with a band yes. Right. But the majority of injuries at this job are going to be like, I hit my foot with the drag. I, you know, coming out of the machine. It's teenagers working. That's all it is. Now, do the teenagers have to, oh, uh, do they have to do their work according to minor laws and that kind of stuff? I mean, do you have, 
during certain hours. Oh, yeah, can't. like okay. age-wise, I can't have them past a certain point unless they're over 16. You know, okay. So many hours a day. Yeah. Okay. All Just that. curious. Okay. Right. okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys find anything else that you want to change, let me know. If not, I'll have Gary go over this and I'll change that to supervisor and I'll take out company and put Karen. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Julie, you want to talk about pay grade policy? Yes, let me tell you kind of something funny. You know, when I when I do stuff like this, I, I'm trying to think of making it as easy to understand as possible. Well, then I get people coming to me and saying, do you know what you're doing to me? And I'm like, okay, wait, what are you talking about? And so, just for an example, because I thought it was funny, Mr. Sheriff said to me, Julie, if you change this pay grade system near me, you see that our guys will start out at $31 an hour. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I'm glad he brought it to my attention. And Gwen brought something to my attention. I was able to clarify, and also Bailey. Um, but I try to make it simple to understand that our brains don't all work in the same way, I guess. So this would be a completely regrading re our grading policy. So we would. If you would allow me to, and we could start with this, or alter to whatever you want, it would then take the place of what we are already using, this existing one. So then we'd have to make a chart out like this from here. Okay, so the thing that bugged me about this is it says from 7 to 25. And then on other paperwork, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are listed. And so or up to, yeah, up to six. So it made no sense to me that this started at seven, number one. And so I wanted to do the grades from one to 25. And so what that's going to do with people like that are at 14, it's going to shift them down. They're not going to get a higher wage. They're just going to shift down into a different grade because we'd be starting at a one instead of a, a seven. And so um, if they're at, a, you know, starting at a 21 right now, just because they changed grade doesn't mean they're going to get higher pay. It just means this is replacing this one. And so the other thing that I um, tried to do with this one is start the wage at where the reps are at. The reps get paid $12 an hour, but we have guys working out in the parks. You know, I would imagine they work pretty hard all day long and they get paid 11 50 so it doesn't make any sense to me that we would pay refs higher than we pay our, our guys working out in the field. So that's why I started this at 12 as a recommendation. And then kind of followed the way that it shifts upward from on this one. Um, and then went up a little higher priced than this one because of what's going on in the world and the economy. And it's harder for people to get by. So I went a little higher, but I start and I started higher. We do have some grades that people that are graded at like a two and a three and a four. It's like eight dollars an hour. I don't know anybody that we would want to pay eight dollars an hour to. So I don't even know if we need to start there anymore. We could shift this down to ten and do a ten dollar, but you know this is just a consideration. And then I remembered at one meeting, I think it was Matt. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you saying, you know, if somebody's going to come here with a bachelor's degree and, and maybe even experience, they shouldn't be making less than 20 bucks an hour. So that's why I threw that in there, just to remind me to talk to you guys about it, that if, if we look at somebody that's applied for a position and they have a bachelor's degree, then they should at least be at grade 10 or higher, just for the bachelor's degree. That's the way my thought was with this. But if not, you can go by experience only or whatever you want to do, but that's why I threw that in there. So. Um, I, I included the hourly, the annual wage, so that you could really see what they would really be making. But this is only full-time, of course, so half of it if it's a part-time person. And then I went ahead and added the 10% more over here, so that if you wanted to, you could do the lowest to the highest of their starting pay would be the 2496 or 960 annually up to 27450. And that's what we could advertise is the the in those two, so what, it's only be ten percent higher than what the base pay is. Um, is that what the previous chart was? It was like that, and it. Um, I don't know if it did the ten percent thing. I think it actually might have gone even further than that, but I'm not sure. But that's why I did that because that's what our our policy now says that they can do the ten percent higher if they feel they deserve it for experience and, and whatever. 
So I got a couple questions. Okay. So I think if we're going to have a chart, and it sounds like we are. Um, well, we already do. Well, yes, if we change it. The existing one, we're, 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 we should have what's called, it looks like a band for each job description. Yes. So every job we have in the county, there should be a band associated with that. Yes, except we're going to take that word band because it confuses everybody and call grade. So Fine. Grade will be the new term. Fine. Yes. So if everybody has a grade associated with the job description, and and then that grade goes from f in the old chart from f year one up to year twenty. Yes, so they stay in that, that grade as long as they're in that position. Is that the sheriff's department's different? Is that what we're also doing for the new chart? We just don't have it all broken down right. that way. Exactly. I just wanted to get your ideas on where you want this base starting pay for each grade, and then we can do. I just don't take the time unless I know that you're interested in me taking the time. So that's why I started with this. Then we would create this. And then another consideration is, see, the Sheriff's Department uses this for how they actually pay for 20 years now. They love it. And I think Corey will keep it unless he decides to do different or there's more money available. But they're really using this as their way of increasing pay. That's not what this was created for, but it works perfectly for their 20-year retirement program. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to ask you as soon as you're done. Okay, so we could create that same type of thing for 20 years, and then that's a stepping stone that can be used by certain departments, but it wouldn't work for every department. And that's why Emily said, you weren't, Julie, this was not supposed to be used for what you guys are using it for. And I said, well, they all thought it was, but it just happened to work perfect for Blaine. So he incorporated it, and he's doing that. So. I'm sorry. I know Blaine's waiting until you're done. <laughs> but if I do that, I'll forget what I'm asking at the time. And you don't think I do? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, if, if Emily made the point that that's what, not what it's for, I thought that's exactly what it's for. Because, well, real quick, what I was used to seeing is any, any person that had a job in the county, full-time job, they had to be... Um, at, at a grade, and that grade is associated with their job description. And, and what it did is it made it where if I wanted to be um, sweeping the floors for the rest of my career, I could only get paid so much. I couldn't just keep getting increases year after year after year. No, in this, we can, we can hire different people that can do this in this range. So you can stay there if you want, but you're only going to get to this amount. But I, I guess I was under that assumption because that's what I'm used to doing with every position. Well, but but you're saying that's incorrect? It's correct and incorrect because you can still do that with this chart. You can say if you choose to be a you know, custodian, you're going to be an 11 for the rest of your life, and 11s are going to you know, can max go up out. to about that, that's where they're going to max out. Uh -huh. So we can still use that for this for that purpose. But it was initially created for a hiring program basically when you're first hiring. And so then each department's used it different. Now remember that for here, some people didn't get raises for seven years. So that something like this has not been utilized here consistently. And I think it's Weaver that brought it in, if I'm, if I'm remembering right. So I just want to help clarify it because there was so much confusion when I first started and everybody was doing it different. And so that's why I'm trying to come up with a program where we literally have this page, then we have this page, and then we create another one if there's any way to project how you see their wages going up for the next five years, if we want a five-year goal. Everybody's asking me that if, if we can come up with something that tells them what they can hope for, then they'll be happier. But if we just keep every year making a bake to get more money for their employees, they feel frustrated because they don't know, you know, if Leslie retires, what's the next person going to do? How are they going to help control things? And there's just a lot of, you know, changes. So is the thought process a beginning wage and an end wage on that grade and call it good? Because I'm agreeing. It could be 2% increase for whatever. It could be a 3 or a 1 or a none. Yeah. Whatever you guys want to do. You know kind of what's coming into the county, whereas I know the budgets have been tight. And so there may be flexibility that we can start with $12 an hour soon and not have to ever go below that. 
and and then hopefully we can keep more people and you know pay a little better in some of the areas. But the other part of this is making it equitable too. That all deputies are getting the same starting wage. All deputies are increasing at about the same rate. Um, there's not equity there right now, and so there's things like that. Oh, don't use that word in here, please. Thank you. Oh, equity. Uh. Equity. Hate That's it. what I get preached to with HR all the time. Don't. Everything needs to be okay. Can I say equitable? <laughs> <laughs> Fair. What word do you want me to So, going back, I think to you talking about you know Emily saying the intent was not to use this. She's right, and there's a reason for that. The intent was this is what we're going to use to figure out where to hire people based on their experience. The problem with this chart is exactly, and you brought it up. We could agree to this and we could say, yeah, we're going to follow this chart, right? Mm -hmm. And in two years, you could have a new commission that's going to say, we're not following this chart anymore. And you're going to have employees that are going to be looking at that chart saying, well, I've been here five years and I started on this line, you know, and I started at $12 an hour and so I'm five years in, I should be at sixteen seventy five or whatever that dollar amount is. And if I'm not, I'm upset. That's the challenge that we have with a, with a chart of this type. We cannot guarantee a pay increase every year. We, we can't project out five years. We can't project out one year, frankly. Right. We're going to sit down here in a couple of months, and we're going to look at the budget, and we're going to argue for six weeks about it until we come to a resolution. Um, you know, in an ideal world, yeah, there would be opportunities for increase, but, you know, that's no different in the private sector either. The private sector, I don't know if I'm going to get a pay raise every year. I hope so, and I hope that if I work hard, I do. And and our employees, I'm not saying they're not deserving of pay increases year after year, but that's the challenge that you have. If you if you have a graph of pay based on years, and you're going to use that, it becomes an expectation. It becomes an expectation, and you're you're kind of tying the hands of of future Us. commissioners and and the commission. And it's not that we don't want our hands tied in, as far as increasing wages, in my opinion, it's that sometimes there's other expenditures that, that take precedence, you know, and we've got to weigh those out. And maybe the increase is going to be 2% instead of whatever that, you know, step is. I don't know what those steps are, to be honest. I yeah. guess I could look and see. I, can't, I think it's 2.5, but I can't remember for sure. I, say, I think it's higher than that. You know, I, I think the, you know, go, no, 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 go ahead. Then, yeah. I, I think the main objective of setting something up like this is that you you're not going to stay in one grade well if you can stay if you stay in your one grade that doesn't mean you continually increase for 30 years I think that's just the main objective of this is to say look yeah, depending on your qualifications if there's no qualifications at all it, it'll be this grade and however you move up or down in that grade depending on year by year just know that there's a maximum for that grade because there's no qualifications we can hire somebody else with no qualifications also. So I just, I, I think that's the underlying purpose of this, so. Well, and even the max could change with a new council or a new commission five years down the road, but we could at least have that, the minimum and the max, and not do this long, drawn out process that it have, makes them expect. For the Sheriff's Department, they actually want to do this. Well, I think this is important for hiring to some degree, yeah. because it gives some guidance as yeah. to where they ought to be on the scale, because if you just say, well, it's from minimum to maximum, and somebody comes in with one year experience. You could have a, you know, a manager say, "Well, I want to, I want them to be towards the top end of that, right?" right? Not, I mean, in theory. Sure. And the other issue, though, that and concern that I have is if we're going to change grades, we have to go through every single employee and see where they actually stand, because I don't want us to say, "Well, you're you're now a grade ten, right?" And then look at this and say, well, wait a minute, I'm not getting paid what a grade 10 gets paid. And and maybe we need to make some adjustments to get people to that point, which I'm not opposed to, but we need to know what that's going to cost before we jump all the way into it. Well, one thing I shared with the assessor's um, head, I let her know that what I would do if this is approved is meet with every department head we go over where they're graded right now, and then we get them in their proper graded so that, to make sure the heads understand. And then that would actually go into the Cassell program so that we actually use that little spot in there that says what's their grade. We, no, nobody's even marked in there right now, and that doesn't make no sense to me. 
if we're going to use a grade system, let's get it in our system so the next people who see it know what's going on. So what's the need to talk to the department head? Couldn't we just look at their wages and see where they land right now? Yes. Or, or in theory. Could. In theory. And then just could, confirm it, that it's correct, I guess. Well, yeah, that's what I would confirm. Budget. Yeah. Last thing I want to do is move out their budget and try to do some preliminary stuff before they come to you guys. So there's not confusion like there was last year when people got blindsided by some things that maybe you guys didn't know happened. You did hear the library, for example, where she worked for like four weeks and then came in here and it was thrown away like it didn't matter. And she worked on it for four weeks. So we just want to kind of do preliminary work with them and make sure we're all on the same page with the pay, the new pay policy, with the, um, you know, if we change this grade system and then it wouldn't start till January 1st. I'm hoping with what we get within the Cassell program, um, which Leslie and you will be going over a lot of, in that when you get that Cassell program, it will actually have their exact wage and everything on it and what they're getting paid throughout the year. We can look at it at any time. And um, by having that, we'll know really what they're making at that moment and not have to go back through all this process. I'm not saying I'm in favor of this or, or not. I'm just telling you that's what Cassell will do for us as soon as we get it implemented. Um. I wish I would have created what I wanted to create for you guys, which was would show you the step by step what would happen if we if we did this. If you even like these numbers at all, this would be incorporated, and then this would be redone to match this all the way through. But it wouldn't change anybody's pay right now. It would just be they would be a new number on the grade system, and then we create another chart that shows the min and the max. And then there was one more that would need to be created. Oh, that's if you guys wanted to do a five year projection of what you hope you can do for your employees. If not, just. It sounded like Mike was really excited to do that. Well, I want you guys to know you guys are the ones that brought this stuff up. I don't bring these things in. Well, my the, ideas. The, big, the, biggest, the biggest thing I see with all of it, like Mike said earlier, we can't predict from year to year what money we're going to have. And I'm. One that does not want to see the property taxes continue to go up, and so, uh, but inflation is killing us, and so I I don't want to get stuck into a grade system. We're not I just I'm, I'm, no, we're not stuck into it. But that whole policy that we just went through has this in. Actually, define what you mean by stuck in a grade system. Define that. Uh, stuck in this kind of a system where they're going to go from, if they're in grade 9 or grade 10, and every year they're going to get an increase, no matter what. That's the kind of grade system I see this or that or any of it to be. That's what and I don't think, I don't, well, I know the sheriffs, that they can do that if they feel like it. I don't and and if they have the budget for and it. And if yeah. they have the budget. I mean, if we cut their budget by $500,000, what in the heck are they going to do? Lay off people? They better not. Well, well they better figure it out. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying right now. I'm not going to have you define I, what a woman is after that. <laughs> after that definition. What? <laughs> I don't think you do not know that happened on the news. Uh, I'm just so. Define what a woman is. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. You, I, need, I think we need a starting point. Yes. I, I I think they, but I do not want to hand people a, a chart that, a chart that they that they take home with them and study and think they're going to get that every year. I mean, because that's this year, so, one, well, just, that's why I'm trying to stop that's why you're, but, and that's exactly why Weber County said it should not be used for this. Right. right. That's exactly why they said that, because. Fact, this should have only stayed with HR and maybe the clerk. That was all it was meant for. Yeah. So somehow it got misunderstood, passed around, and everybody thought that they could, they, well, they were really confused about what, because there was bands, it was grades, they were like, what does all this mean? So you're saying what you want to do is this grade 2023 that you've got here. Mm -hmm. You want to go and make it this, and nothing more than that, no steps, no increases, but just put it this as their beginning wage if they start at grade 10. If that's what you want me to do, yeah. There's a I mean, because I can see take. this, because if we don't have 5% more to give to them next year, I'm, I don't want them to be onto a chart where they can see what it's going to be. Even but I see like the point of the general. chart for new hires, yes, and particularly that's, with... That's all this is about. 
which is what it needs to be if that's what we're going to do. Right. And, and I don't have any problem with that yeah. as long as we're not setting this precedent that, you know, for every year you're here, you get, you get well, to bump up in well, wage. Well, and another, another thought process for new hire is, is having the chart you're, you're suggesting, having a low and a high. Um, the, the department head should know where that person fits in. The job description should say where that yeah, person should say. fit in. And then that department says, according to my budget and da 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 da, and how much they should get paid, how much other counties pay this person. This is what my recommendation is. Yeah. It's going to be in this grade, right. but but it's going to be this amount. And then they bring it to us for review. Looks good. I just right. yeah, I think we're really complicating something that can be fairly simple. Yeah. But that's true. So you're saying do away with the, the steps type yeah. of thing and just steps show the hands on all that. Yeah, kind of like them. Agreeing, agreeing with you, Commissioner Fackrell, kind of the same thought process of if we don't have it, then let's... So let the department here come in here and, and give us a reason like why, why it shouldn't be amount. the minimum. That's right. Yeah. Instead yeah. of instead of just having this automatic... Because I think it can be... Do the opposite yeah. to them also. It can yeah. depress them and make them feel worse about their job if they think they should have got it and they didn't get it. Right. Then they're disgruntled. They're unhappy with their job. They complain, and the environment goes yeah. down. But when you, I've only ever gotten increases in my wages when I work for others by working hard and doing my very best. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a department that's heads for: is they come in and they say, "Mike is doing a fantastic job," and I feel like he needs an increase. An Not increase. just so. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Sure. Sure. <laughs> First of all, let's spell bachelors correctly. Oh. That's a, that's <laughs> a single man bachelor, not somebody with a baccalaureate that's degree. That's for man, so never in the right? Okay. That's what she wants. Secondly, the Grand County example may be an alternative. Yes. I because it has it. grades, which are, as I understand it, the grade is used to, is assigned to a particular job and job classification yes. so that if you come in as a particular job or class your your potential range is between grade three and nine depending on experience i guess well if you or the or it's just okay all right so it's just a, a grade for that job yeah. the steps don't necessarily need to refer to years of service that's true that's the true. steps can be established on the basis of any numbers of criteria it may be you will come in at a grade five, step one. Mm -hmm. And step two is at the discretion or recommendation of the department head based upon years of service and you know the following Job three criteria. And, that, and so you don't, and then you're not setting forth a annualized expectation as much as a performance-based expectation that may also have some correlation to years of service, mm -hmm. and it may it may be that the, you will run you through step one, step two, and step three because you're a new employee, just almost on an annual basis. That's almost the expectation, but then you can be clear that step four, five, and six are not going to happen as quickly because you know. So, uh, to me, there's a possibility of working with it in that way. I'm, I'm not, if we use it that way with the steps and are clear that they don't correlate necessarily with years of service, then you have something that you can give to somebody and say, well, if you come here as a grade five, you know, the most you will ever make at step 15 <laughs> is, you know, 30 bucks an hour. And so we're happy to hire you at that, but you may look for other opportunities to jump into a position at the county at grade 10. And you got to do it yourself. You know what you need to do to prepare yourself to step into that when that position becomes available. So to me, there's a possibility here of working with it that way. Yeah. Without. I hadn't thought about that. No, that's a really great point. I like that idea, I like that idea a lot. Idea a whole lot. Yeah. It also would allow us to give some parameters based on job, mm -hmm. yeah. as to you know you could say to the department head, you can hire for this job at a grade four. And they need to either start at a step one or you have the ability to expand out to, say, a step four based on their experience. 
So they're not coming in saying, well, I'm at the very top of that range because they've got experience. You're saying this is, you're limiting it to some degree. And that could be different depending on the job. Yeah. Right? Depending that on gives the skill any, level needed. Any new count, council, commission, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the discretion to do, but it gives them something to. Yeah. Because I'd like to see it more on a merit base, like Matt was mentioning, yeah. is is to have some kind of a merit in there to where they deserve, but not just deserve it, but you know they performed well enough to where they can, they should get more, and not just based upon years of service. I hated that. They're valuable. Yeah, I hated they're more that. valuable. And perhaps you could it. you could put something that says they can step up a grade, or a, sorry, a step based on performance for completing X, Y, and Z, which right. may be different for each position. Yeah, you know? we'd have the department that's going to come up with those qualifications. Yeah. Maybe, maybe or I can look at the job them. descriptions and probably see what they are. Even. Yeah, so you can either move between grades or you can move within a grade amongst the steps. I like that. And maybe that's what this is. This is an example I included just because I easily could find it. I know I have more of these. I just couldn't find them from the different counties. Um, but I wondered why it only went to 13. I thought that was so weird. And so maybe that's kind of what they're doing. I just haven't really talked to them specifically about that. Well, and, and then if you're talking oh, about okay. annualized increases just to do cost of living, you can see that they, they adjusted this schedule by 5.9% yeah. based on cost of living. Right. The entire schedule. And, and the schedule just went up. So maybe you aren't entitled to a step increase, but cost of living adjustment is made and then you make more money yeah. that way. So to me, that looks like a decent way to explore. The other thing we probably ought to explore in doing that is some of these grades perhaps don't go all the way to the end on the steps. For example, if you're a grade one, which means you probably, you're a, you're a referee, right, right, for the rec program. Even if you've done it for 15 years, I don't know that we're going to pay you $30 an hour to do it. <laughs> and so maybe some of those are just grayed out at a certain point. You max out. Even if it's at step five for certain grades, you know, I could see that kind of yeah. shifting as you go through and maybe it. that's why those first six weren't included on that other one. I couldn't figure it out, but now that you said Well, that, perhaps because at a certain point it's, yeah. you know, there are certain jobs that you can you can earn more because you become more valuable over time and there are certain jobs that maybe you don't because they're not intended to be long-term career That's paths right. or jobs so it sounds like if you take your scale that you've started working on with the 1 to 25 mm -hmm. and do a grid similar to what we currently have but do it based on steps and not based on years of service mm -hmm. um, that sounds like, I think, what we're talking about, yeah. maybe, is a bit. Yeah. There's a couple things I just want to point out. Like, keep in mind that any time any of these things are created, we'll always make sure that it says budget. What's the word like that? If budget allows, right? Budget so allows. any of these rules, even in our pay policy and the ways that they can increase with that, it's all based on if there's budget available. So we would just make sure to include that. Um, but um, what was it? Now, I have a question along the way you're trying to think on it, because I may forget it by the next time, um, is I know that certain, like school districts, you come into a district and you've got 20 years out there and you just want, I'm tired of the Salt Lake School District and I want to go to the Morgan School District, they only start them, they only give them so many years of service to be able to come to Morgan. So, whatever you do when you're doing this, and I don't know how you'd put that into the numbers, but if they're on a, a 10 year, you know, a 10, grade 10, um, the max they could get is up for, for their five, you know, let's say it's five, five years, that's what their max is that they could get. I don't know, that's just a thought. Yeah, just something to think about. Something to think about. Well, I, I still I, like the merit, whatever it is, I like merit. Well, me too. We've got to create a whole new merit program, though. So. That's right. I will start we getting do. information from other ones to, to get the pull up together. But the other thing I was thinking is, is how each department head, because they're elected officials, will take this and they'll want to twist it in their own way. So that's right. another thing that we have to consider is just um, 
is this a flexible program or is this countywide? Because the sheriff does it different, you know, and yet that's kind of just totally, he kind of does his own thing and that's, it works, but, um, so I guess we just need to think about that as we're approving things along the way. Well, we also need to, how we do it affects our budgeting. Well, can't can we control that at budget time every time? Mm -hmm. And we, we talk about that at budget time. The, historically, the pay increases we've done have been colas. It's been across the board to everybody, except for some minor things. We've done some. We did some in the sheriff's office to try to get wages up enough that we could attract deputies. We've done some other ones in a few departments where you know we're adding a new position or combining positions, things like that. But for the most part, increases have been across the board. Um, and cola type increases, which sometimes I think on a scale like this, people will have a tendency to say, well, but I've been at the same grade forever. Well, yeah, but you have gotten increases because there's been a cola, you know, yeah. multiple times. Right. So part of it is in the way pre we present it, I think. Um, like with the Sheriff's Department, I learned this week that they're, because they do use this system, and some of their deputies that come here they have, they've created kind of a, they have a little bit of a weird schedule because somebody that starts and has 10 months their first year doesn't get credit for that 10 months until the 1st of January. So they kind of miss two months. I don't know, it's really weird how it's working out because I'm working with one of the detectives or the deputies right now and he feels like he got cheated a year of an increase. And so I'm going to work through all those details with him, and Blaine and I and Jen will work together to figure out if he is owed any money. But that's the other part of this, is because he's utilizing this as his way of how many years' experience they have, um, you know, this is one of the deputies that feels like he was cheated out of a year's worth of an increase. And so I'm just doing the research for him to figure it out, and then... Um, Talking, you know, and I told him, I said, I have to, this is something I, I have to give over the sheriff's department. I think what you need to still do is do it. We've got to come up with a merit system. Because yeah. I don't want to just pay people just because they're here. Right. I don't want them to be here and expect to get 50 bucks an hour just because they're sitting here in this desk. I want them to be performing. If they're not performing, which the majority of our people do. The majority of our people in our county perform. But, I mean, if they, we come across somebody that might not be, I don't want them to have any kind of an expectation that they're going to get a raise other than COLA. Yeah. That's my opinion. Can I just ask you, why, why do they expect that they are owed money? Yeah. For because if everyone in the Sheriff's Department is utilizing this type of chart, and when they get hired, if they're at five years experience and that's where they start, then January 1st of the next year it should go up and you know every January. Did he not assign an agreement of where he started? Um, I'm not sure but we're trying to figure out if it was done correctly. If it's done correctly then we're all great but it's weird because he quit for a little while then he came back and so there's months it's, I don't know, I don't even want to waste you guys' brain space on it, but I'm, it's... Well, I don't want you to either, but I, at the same time, I don't want these guys to just think they can come at any time and just say, hey, I was cheated, and we go, oh, okay, we just yeah. roll well, that's over. that's what and, Blaine said, is really, he signed a document when he was hired. That's right. So, and we got to hold by that, or we're going to open a can of worms. Right. Which we already started this year. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got to stop. Um, yeah, we, we've really got to have... And, and it's a difficult position for HR because HR has to be that gatekeeper between, hey, this is the policy and we don't just do increase to do increases. And that, like advocacy, right, for our employees. And yeah, I have to advocate for both. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, right. of this position, and so it's, um, it's tricky at times. I mean, True. I would prefer that, that you err on the side of advocating for for the county as a whole, but certainly we want the employees to have some, some an advocate as well, and hopefully their department head is that advocate. That's what I would think. Well, their they should be. Their supervisor should. ought to be their advocate in that regard. So. And I, I want you to know, as the commissioners, that I do advocate for the county all the time. It's something that the employees are going to be sick of me. Okay. Well, it sounds like we've got some, some tentative guidance. Yeah. Are Come you? up with some more. 
conceptual level of things and kind of keep uh, think about the whole step process and um, and then get back to you guys on that. There's just one more thing I needed to ask you. Yeah, I can't remember. COVID knocked my brains out of my head. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't talked to you lately. <laughs> Well, if you think of it, we can still talk later in the meeting. Um, I think let's take a 10 minute break here before our meeting starts. Okay. And we'll
hopefully once we get the park thing going over here with the pickleball courts, we hopefully won't be using any of those to oh. it. Oh. Oh. But, yeah, I just think it's, it's a little frustrating. Just not interested. But. I didn't hear any of the thunder and lightning. I did. I didn't know what he told me he'd talk to you. and. And, I, uh, and I, so I, I didn't know what you two had talked about. Yeah, I can and talk to you. The way you explained it to me, I thought, I mean, oh, it was I great. guess that's what I'm And I can't. So, it's been long enough now, but I... The kids. So it was really kind of noisy. Yeah, I definitely know the rest of the Really? Somehow he... he okay. I swear, I, somehow he's seen a rant balance or something like that. It's like, really, I think I'll talk to you. I'll sit on the bar next one. I'll make us even. Mm, I'm good for now. Yeah. 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 If this meeting goes very long, I'll get some caffeine. Oh, maybe I didn't understand your text. I just thought I understood it to be an operation. Operation. What is your piece for? I got a message from the jurors. So, proposal for general funds being paid for me. Okay, welcome to the Morgan County Commission, August 2nd, 2022. We appreciate those who are joining us in person and via virtual means. We will begin our meeting um, with an invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll go ahead and offer that, and then we'll move into our consent items. Our Father in Heaven, we're grateful to gather here as citizens of this county and we're grateful for the county in which we live. We're grateful for the rain that fell upon our county yesterday and ask you to please bless us with continued moisture. We're grateful for the people who live here and all that they do for each other and, and we ask you to please bless them. We ask you to bless us as we discuss the needs of our county this evening that we'll be able to make wise decisions. And these things we pray for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we will move to our consent items. Item number one is approval of the July 19th me meeting minutes. Are there any updates to the minutes that need to be made? So I would just ask that we insert after action item F1 that I was excused for the meeting. Oh, yes, okay. Or dishonorably discharged, or whatever you want to say. <laughs> I wasn't here for the balance. And okay, tell me again where to put that, sorry. I left after action item F1. Okay, so insert. Commissioner McConnell was excused from the meeting. Okay. I did already receive um, corrections from Blaine and Garrett, and I've made those already so I'll just add you guys need. Julie I just had one and that was on the last page Commissioner Jared Anderson Anderson is Ian. I did it again. It, you got Ian everywhere else so but hard. it's all in there. <laughs> Chair's got my back. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. I'm sorry I missed that one. I, any <laughs> other updates commissioners? Nope. Okay with that we'll look for a motion to approve the July 19th 2022 meeting minutes. I move that we approve the July 19th, 2022 meeting minutes. I'll second. At, with, with the uh, changes. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the July 19th, 2022 meeting minutes uh, with the adjustments made this evening. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item number two, approval of Resolution CR-22-05, repealing Resolution CR-22-04 due to a clerical error. Uh, Leslie, do you want to maybe give the background on this one? This is the uh, amendments to the budget. Yeah, I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> 
had some bad account numbers in there. Okay. And I met with Alex. He helped me, and we got the right account numbers. I was gonna say, I don't think there's any changes to the dollar amounts, no, right? Dollar it was just the account numbers. Was account numbers that were, I had a couple that were not correct. Perfect. Just fix. Okay, any questions? Make a motion that we approve resolution CR-2205, repealing resolution CR-2204. Second. We have a motion, a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, and then we'll have our budget hearing to to approve the updated um, resolution. Because budget hearings are required to be at 6 p.m. or after, we'll move that further down in our agenda. Um, I don't. I think we'll get to that pretty quickly. So. Question, is I right to keep it this way and let you just adjust it as you need? That's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's fine That's to have it there. We just know that the time has to be adjusted. So, okay. um, All right. We'll move to item C, uh, declarations of conflict of interest from any of the commissioners. None. None. Okay. Seeing none, we will move on to our public comment period. This is an opportunity for the public to address the commission. Uh, we do have one public hearing, and that is on the budget item that was just discussed. I believe everything else yeah, is uh, an action item. Seeing no public comment, we will move to our presentations. We have a presentation from the Audit Committee of the 2021 Financial Audit of the County. Okay, basically what we did, Leslie and I, uh, sat down. Well, of course, you guys went through the draft last time, and uh, it was submitted. We approved that last time to go ahead and submit that, the audit. We didn't see any changes other than we think there's one problem on it, which I can discuss with Leslie, but it's official now. Um, so it has been submitted. It's the first time ever that we've gotten it so early. <laughs> 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 so... Congratulations. That's great. So I don't have, and it's, you know, I don't have anything else other than that. If you haven't gone through it, you need to. Because it's already at the state, head of the state. Okay. The public knows website, our website, and the state auditor's website. When do our infractions need to be handled they're all, by? They're already. You need as an audit committee and go through that. Okay. Yeah. I'll send you an email. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Leslie, and, and your yeah. team for all the work on that, and the audit committee as well for your work on that. I know there's a lot of time and effort that goes into that, so we do really appreciate it. A lot more time is going to go into it, too. <laughs> yeah, and, and now we get to start on the next one all this time. <laughs> the way it goes. Yeah. The nice thing is that she's working on I mean, things are going along right now to where Maybe by February she can turn it over to the auditors. Maybe and they, make it easy. Wow, you're really expecting a lot. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. You're so efficient on it. I don't see any reason why we can't now. <laughs> I just ask when you meet as an audit committee. I mean, at one point we were discussing whether or not we should bring have someone perform an accounting function for the county. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there may be an interesting opportunity to bring someone in. There's a woman that's moving into our neighborhood with her children. She's a Ukrainian refugee, and she is an accountant and human resource specialist that speaks four languages. And, um, <laughs> One of them being English. What if you can learn three languages in the next month? I don't know what our there's one English. English. What our need for Polish is, but uh, well, no, well, English is one of our languages with high competency. So anyway, it was just I don't know if we're ready to make that move. I know we've had an accounting firm performing an accounting function throughout the year, and that may be the way we want to proceed. It was just something I thought of as you were speaking. So it's a good idea. We can. We can discuss that. Look at what we spent. 
That's right. That's right. Yeah, I think it, we definitely ought to discuss it in conjunction with our budget process. Yeah, I agree. That's a good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, a couple of years ago, part of our, was it two or three years ago, part of our agreement with our current accounting firm was that they were going to put some put together some policies that we could use in, in moving towards having our own in-house accounting department. Okay, any questions on the audit before we move on to action items? All right. Um, I do think that perhaps because we had that 6 o'clock public hearing listed and then the action items after, we may have folks who are thinking they don't need to show up until 6 o'clock. So we're going to probably jump around a little bit within our, our meeting schedule here to take care of a few things. Do I have to change the agenda if we jump around? But this still stands, right? We will change it. No, yeah, it's fine for this, but for the minutes, okay. we'll move it around so you can see which item we did okay. for second, third. So um, that being said, let's move to action item number two. I don't believe that Mr. Young is here to discuss the nine line conditional use permit. So we'll move to item action item number two, um, Leslie Hyde, discussion decision on resolution CR 22-06, uh, adopting a budget policy. This is the policy we talked about last time. Um, Garrett gave me a couple of clerical errors to be fixed. I gave Julie the good copy for you to sign tonight. Do you have any questions? No, it looked great to me. Okay. Yeah. That's easy. Okay. So um, we'll look for official motion and I'll make a motion that we approve resolution CR 22-06, adoption of a budget policy. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve resolution CR 22-06, uh, Morgan County budget policy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Let's move to item number three, action item number three. Uh, Mrs. Woody. Okay, we will know. <laughs> so we're just asking for an extension on our subdivision that currently you have six months and then you have to ask for an extension. So we're at the six month mark. The extension is a is it a twelve month extension or is it only six months? It's only six months. It's okay. only six. This is one we've talked about yeah, and we, we need, need to, to probably it. amend. Shortest in the state. Yep. That's what I think. There's no way you can do it in six months. I mean, we didn't even get out of the county for two and a half months, get past the county records. So, and then there's supply chain issues. I mean, it's just, you can't yeah. get on people's lists unless you have certain things done. So we're three months out for other things. And so, I don't know, if, if six months is impossible, I'll just tell you. So it, what is it in the rest of the state? Most are a year to two years. Oh. So it's not the same as a developer agreement then? No, that's okay. that's something different. Something different. Yeah. Okay. All right. That typically runs many, many years. This is okay. This is more short term. So um, they provided the the requisite letter that explains why they're asking for an extension. Um, so it looks like that complies with our current code. Any questions for the applicant? Well, even with that, we can't even get on Mountain, like Dominion Energy, we can't even get on that until we have the sidewalk in, and then they said there's a three-month wait. Oh, wow. So even if you give us a six-month You'll probably extension, still need another one. Yeah, and I don't know if we can do that or not, but I'm... I would suggest, and, and maybe um, let's put this down as an action item for our planning department. Let's ask them to look into amending that section of the code for subdivision. Um, I don't know what it's called exactly. Do you know what it's called? Well, it's it's the, it's the deadline. It's the duration of a plat approval is what it okay. is. So and plat approval, timeline, duration. And let's look at, at amending from six months to 
12 or possibly more. And the intention is, so we didn't want somebody to get a plat. I think the intention of it originally was that somebody wouldn't get a plat and then sit on it for years and years and years and do nothing and then decide to do it. In the meantime, the county's changing other things, but because they've had this in place for years, they're quote unquote grandfathered in, right? And so that's why there was kind of a short time frame, but we all know that time right now supply chain and other things are making it very difficult so. so the other thing that's generally much more common in today's development world is for developers to get approval of the plat and then instead of recording posting bonds and completing the infrastructure they get the approval they complete the infrastructure then they get the county sign off and then they just post the warranty bond um, and so to require recording within six months when you have a construction period with all of the stuff that you've talked about really renders it impossible. So I would suggest we go to at least an 18th month, 18 month window for plat approvals. I completely get someone sitting on a plat approval for multiple years. You don't want to do that, but I don't want to go through that process again. And I'm sure the developers don't, you know, just because of a normal construction process. So. And that's now, it was always authorized by the LUDMA, but now it's express, and, and many developers do that because of the change in what the bonding and cash escrow completion assurance requirements are. That makes sense. But is there any way ours can be extended? Because if we end up six months, then we're going to end up in December when we can't pour asphalt. Um, on site. We'd have to look at the code. I'm not okay. sure we're authorized to do more than a six-month extension. I think under the current code, it is limited to six months, but... We would like to change that code. Okay. Yeah, we want we want to amend that within the next month or two. Yep. <laughs> okay. If we can. So that, would that affect ours then if you amend it? She will in six months. She would have to come back again and, and then ask for that that longer time. You would at least have to apply again, whether or not I don't know. That. Yeah, maybe we could change it so <laughs> we it's don't just need you to be here. I don't know. We can talk about that. Just yeah. Some time. I think in the meantime, we really do appreciate though you being aware and taking the time to come in and and do this because even though it is a little bit of a hassle, you're complying with the code, which is exactly what we hope all developers do. So thank you for doing that. Uh, let's, I'll ask for a motion then on number, item number three. I move that we, ex that we extend the subdivision first amendment for the Paul Warner subdivision for six months. Or to give them an extension for six months? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to extend the Paul Warner subdivision for six months uh, as per current county code. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So that means I have to come back in six months again? So even or just finish. <laughs> or yeah, just finish. <laughs> yeah, we're going to finish in six months. <laughs> so Let's hope you get it finished. Right? Can, I, can um, I give you a few names to call? <laughs> so I have a question before she leaves. So if we go and change the code or it gets through the uh, process, does she have to come back just to have that done? I think so yes. because okay. she had it originally approved under the old code, and okay. so it would still apply. All right. So does that mean I can ask for another extension or I have to reapply? No, no, you I just can ask for another extension. extension. Okay. Yeah, you'll ask yeah. for another extension. Okay, thank you. And hopefully by then we'll have it amended so you could ask for extension of 18 months instead of six. Okay. That's a plan. Thanks. Whatever you need to we do. We hope it doesn't take you two years to get <laughs> cement for your sidewalk, but, but just could. in case. It could. Uh, it, yeah, exactly. This week it could. Thanks. I thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. That leaves us without any of the other current applicants here. <laughs> so let's, uh, do we have a closed session that we need or anything? Or? Do that. Not that I've been made aware of, but we could talk about commissioner comments at this point instead of later on in the meeting. you want me to do a quick economic development update for you? If you're bored. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's do that. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I know it's not Can they do it on the, it will not be on the agenda? It's just an update. It's an update. Yeah, we're not going to be on the allocate any funding. Just the information. Okay, so really quickly, I'll just start at the beginning of the report that I have for this uh, this month. 
Uh, we continue to work on the Mountain Green Interchange. Uh, we've been working at a state level. Uh, we've had conversations um, with Davey Stewart, with David Stewart again, and he actually reached out, said he's had conversations with President Stewart Adams, and he would like to set up a meeting with the commissioners just to exchange information and just kind of get a feel if there's uh, commitment and um, positive interest. So I told uh, um, uh, David Stewart to go ahead and uh, look at the schedule for uh, President Adams to see what would work for him. And then when we get that, we'll send that out and see um, if we can arrange some time with uh, commissioners just to have that general conversation. Uh, he feels like it's kind of a positive. We'd also had a meeting with David Stewart um, and express some concerns with some water issues, and I know he's working with President Adams on some of those water issues, specifically some water retention capacity issues and some concerns with water being taken or not being able to store it or losing it. So they're working on addressing that. Um, water will be a big issue in this year's legislature. Uh, if you're not aware of it, uh, there'll be a huge focus on dealing with water issues. Probably a lot of that is residential consumption, so there'll be some I think coming down the pike some requirements for restricted use on residential and how uh, from a county perspective you work through that on planning would be really interesting to see what the recommendations are. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard any of that but I think that's something we need to be aware of moving forward especially if Joshua is going to continue to work on you know uh, the general plan and updating uh, all of our planning requirements. Um, we're working through the development committee right now on uh, being an assistance to Joshua as he works on the general plan update and any planning updates. Uh, we're having some suggestions on some PADs or PUDs or PRUDs depending on what works for you. Those are planned residential developments, clustering concepts and what works within this community to make sense for us. Uh, but still having the flexibility to uh, address the ever-changing ch environment that we're in as you just uh, were presented today um, with challenges with supply chain. So that's continuing to move forward. Uh, you may already be aware of this, but the general plan update has been pushed off until October. Uh, with IBI doing several small area studies, I think the Planning Commission felt very comfortable in doing some additional small area studies for some of the other smaller townships and communities and having all of them presented at the same time, which I think makes a tremendous amount of sense. So we're incorporating a very robust general plan that meets specific concerns in specific areas, much not just focused in on Morgan City. I'm going to interrupt you right there yes. for one second. I yeah. want to put a plug in to the public regarding those. Um, <clears throat> the Planning Commission has put out notice seeking applicants to be part of those area small area plan groups. Uh, thus far, the county's only received a handful, and they're asking for like seven from each area. So we're, I think we've received five total. So if you have any interest at all in being involved in the area planning for the area that you live in, please look at the county website, get that form, fill it out, submit it. And I think there's tremendous value in that because as the general plan was initially kind of um, overlaid, it was a very generic for the entire communities, the county. And I know specific communities have very specific interests that probably should be reflected in that general plan. And so I think that's why the Planning Commission said, well, let's, let's be a little more intentional in this, which I, you know, applause to them to taking the time to do it right the first time. Um, oh, I know there's strong, there's areas with strong feelings on how they want their areas done. It's going to be interesting when they don't participate and then things yes. are set in stone and then they want to complain. It's, they, we, need, we need our county to, to help participate. Well, yeah, and to that, Commissioner, I, I think that there's uh, some tremendous value as you start looking at your communication and public outreach plan that I think that you've had some conversations with maybe a contractor to accomplish because that is the venue of getting information out to folks so that they're aware. A lot of people are very busy like you are, and so they don't hear that information because they may not be in a certain medium to, to catch what's going on in a variety of things up to and including government outreach. So. You know, whatever we can do in our local um, social networks to pass that information along, I think is very valuable. Do we know if that's been posted on Morgan Moms? <laughs> I, I mean, I it, have no idea if it's been posted I don't on love Morgan Moms. Moms certainly, it gets, county it gets news out there. Mm -hmm. and, and through the county on Facebook, right? Through the county notices on Facebook. So but certainly, yeah, I mean, the more we can get word out on that, the better. I just realized my glasses are broke, so at any moment my lens may fall out. I mean, we get you. 
I found a week and I was trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so secondarily to that, along with the communication plan and modeling, is if this, if and or when the Build Back Better passes and all of these federal funds start to be released, uh, there will be a lot of dollars again out for broadband. Uh, speaking to the state and to Rebecca Dilge at the state level, they're really relying on the can't remember what the public relations, but it's an outreach mobile app to test your speed. And they have little dots with different colors and it kind of indicates who has what speeds or if there isn't any speed in there. And as we put in for applications for grant dollars, uh, I think that would be very valuable. So we're going to work on a campaign, uh, maybe door to door to get that information out. Uh, COE board used to be Is called- Is that the, the Test It app? Yes, yes sir. Um, so the Test It app, Again, if we don't get it, we can still do an application, and I still think we'll have strong applications, but I think that test of that will be very beneficial. So uh, we're going to print up um, some flyers to hand out. We may we use just serve, but we'd also encourage commissioners to take 10, 15, 20 and hand them out in their neighborhoods because you're evenly dispersed with them in the county. So as soon as we get to that, we'll talk about it tomorrow in our COE meeting. Um, I think, again, getting the word out to get that uh, test done. Uh, hopefully we can do that through the marketing public relations. Uh, so just touching quickly then on broadband, uh, we have put out our uh, F, our uh, P, what is it, R RFI, I. and our hope is that we'll start getting, I actually reached out to some individual companies just to make sure, and uh, hopefully we'll start having some stuff roll in. It may be contingent again upon when those grants roll out. They may get interest when they realize there's some actual federal funding out there. What's the deadline on that RFI? There isn't a deadline. Left I think it. we Which left, left it open, open on purpose. So, okay. um, and again, what we may also do is, as those dollars start to become available, we may work through the state to work it through their um, RFI um, purchasing system. So, we'll continue to work on that. Uh, the geodome projects continue to move forward. We have uh, the go-ahead to purchase. Chris um, from um, East Canyon is reaching out to several companies um, because we're working in partnership with East Canyon and the state. We want to make sure that the dome that we purchase is uh, up to their standards and they're very comfortable with it. So as soon as he comes back with some recommendations, we'll review them, uh, work with Garrett to make sure our purchasing is done within uh, the state requirements and the county requirements and get that purchased. There will be a four to five month um, production on that probably because of supply chain. Um, so we're looking at construction at the beginning or the end of uh, the first quarter of next year. And we believe we'll get it done in time to move that forward. And I'm gonna work with Garrett on work, talking to the state about maybe some payback if we're a little over what our grant application award was. And we'll continue to work on that. Um, IBI is moving forward. Uh, they have a survey ready to go. They're just waiting for the awarding of the contract uh, with whoever you contractually agree with to move that forward. Um, and they continue to work on all the marketing analysis uh, to uh, give us our final report. Como Springs, which you'll hear from today, uh, continues to move forward. They work through the process of getting all of the infrastructure, water, and sewer requirements to the city um, level. I think they worked through that. The city and I, I would give kudos to the city manager, again, Ty, uh, working to create the contract to transfer the water rights um, it was a little complicated, but they were able to do it, and so now they can move. They've given their stamp to at least move it forward. They will serve, and so they have to build to the requirements, which I think is in the best interest of both the county and of Como Springs, uh, even though it was a little more work. I believe planning has worked their way through it, and you'll see that tonight. I had a great conversation. I'm talking fast on purpose, but I had a great conversation with Mark Mitchell, who was serving as their uh, project manager and really gave him strong recommendations to hire a good development company uh, so when they build it, it's done correct the first time. Um, there was some concerns I think expressed uh, because of the state of repair and I think you may have heard of some of the complaints in Como Springs presently, but I have assurances from Mark that that will change as they start to uh, build out and prove, create this amazing destination in Morgan. And so again, our fingers crossed we'll continue to encourage that. Uh, and then they'll also, they're also committed to be good neighbors to the surrounding residents. Uh, so under workflow, other than Como Springs, working with Beehive Cheese, who's located at the bottom of the canyon right next to the hotel, they've outgrown their space. They own property off at uh, the airport, and they're looking to uh, build uh, a new facility there, approximately 40,000 square feet. 
with 55 employees presently, but with the new valve out, they expect to uh, increase um, the employees. They are uh, looking at things like sewer access, water, building height, and other requirements and restrictions being that close to the airport and within the city planning requirements and working through financial tools. I think we need to have a discussion and, and find a good direction from the commission on what you want to do with RDAs. We had really put off RDAs until after um, we got our general plan, which would help us really focus in on areas where we think that they would be best applied and then doing the overlays and creating the budgets and go through that process. But because there's so much pressure right now on some of the, some of the areas, um, such as the airport, I mean, I think you're feeling that a little bit, that it may make sense in the areas that are already designated as light industrial or light manufacturing to create those incentive tools. Um, we also may want to look at the Mountain Green Town Center and maybe do an RDA slash PID overlay on, if it makes sense to provide incentives to start and start that ball moving for those um, development opportunities we have there, especially if we're shooting for a 2030 date. So I think it's a good conversation to have and I'll work with Robert and Blaine to kind of put that information together to start having conversations with other commissioners on. Any questions on any of that? Where's their property? So do you know where the old Browning um, building is that they used to do the composite the bows? The bows. So just adjacent to that, uh, they own under a subsidiary called like Cher Cherry or something like yeah, that, cherry. several acres, seven acres. Choke Cherry. Choke Cherry, and it's property that um, they own, so their preference is to come here to Morgan. I think it fits in our agricultural, and to be honest with you, it gives us an opportunity to maybe kind of build out a retail side of that in you know our Mountain Green Town Center. So there's you know several opportunities in there. Um, what do we call that? The little cheese retail. Beehive. Yeah, but yeah. what's the one of yeah. Beaver? Creamery. Creamery. Yeah, the creamery kind of a feel to it, yeah. which again is kind of fits into uh, Morgan and kind of the feel mm -hmm. of Morgan. So you know, again, those opportunities are starting to to, to come out. So we want to kind of create those opportunities as far as the uh, financial tools. Um, they're being heavily pursued right now by Weaver County, um, and so, but they are very interested. They're working with Big D Construction right now, and Big D's reached out to us, and also had a conversation already with Joshua about this property. Uh, we're also working with a company that presently is up in the Upper Valley, Ogden. Uh, they're running a daycare, and it's more than just a daycare. Um, they run a daycare tumbling, and they want to uh, provide like swim lessons and things like that. So they're looking at about 10,000 square feet of both daycare and a tumbling area, and then if they can get a bill to suit, maybe three or four thousand of pools, so they can give swimming lessons. So this would be more than just like a daycare; it would be kind of a community component for children, whether you want to do swimming lessons, tumbling, dance, uh, and then daycare opportunities. And they seem to be, be a very good company. They're working with um, Nancy Life from some literature company. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, they're actually meeting with the developer right now to start some discussions on some property and where those opportunities may allow them to be within the Mount Green area. They're excited because a large portion of the uh, present um, business is for folks going up to Snow Basin. And so they like to be in the Mount Green area because it makes sense as folks get off I-84, head off trappers if they're right there. And then we all know that probably uh, Mount Green is underserved in the area of good quality daycare. So um, I've got a lot of very positive uh, comments from folks as I've talked to them within the community that they'd love to have a good quality daycare. Um, Nine Springs continues to move forward. They're continuing their public outreach. They're presently in city design. Uh, I expect uh, the review of that to be finished fairly quickly in the comments uh, to Joshua and to Nine Springs. Joshua has met with uh, City Design. He's probably reported this to you, but I uh, had a great conversation with Joshua. I think they came to him and Joshua looked at it and said, okay, I want this to be one body of the apple. Let's get it all out so that there's no surprises at the ending. So I think they took a couple more days in City Design to make sure they had got all of the comments out. And then they'll schedule a meeting with Brock Nelson from Nelson um, Development and with Joshua to kind of go over all those and get all those comments addressed. Um, again, very impressed with Joshua's uh, approach to this which is streamlining it, but making sure we're doing it right the first time. And then again, you'll hear from Nine Line today about their, their build out as far as the uh, moving of the uh, Forest Service attack. Is it Hell Attack? One sec, carefully. Hell Attack, so we're keeping that within Morgan. And an opportunity to start the process of building out what they call an uh, FBO, which is a fixed base operations on uh, the airstrip slash airport. 
And what that means is they provide airframe, mechanic, um, aeronautics. Is it aeronautics? I always say it wrong. So aeronautics services, fuel, and maybe kind of a place for you know folks to kind of hang out while their planes are being worked on. FBO is a, is a uh, kind of not big business, but it, it really kind of shows that the airstrip has kind of moved more than just kind of a backwoods airstrip to something that is a good quality facility. It's actually avionics. Avionics. See, I knew I said it wrong. So avionics. Um, you know, because the airport is limited in size, will always be limited in size, there probably will never be any kind of night flights. So and it feels really difficult for a company to come in and do as just their singular service. So Buster's um, ability to come in and offer the airframe side of it and then working with another a developer to then uh, develop the um, avionics and uh, the fuel sales, I think, kind of creates an FBO feel, even though we don't have a, a set FBO um, operating out of there. Um, and then we continue to have conversations with Weber and Davis County about integrated regional. I, again, I think we have a, a little bit of work to get to the point where I think regionally it makes sense, because we're not looking at them pushing us these big manufacturing companies, but it does make sense for us to be at, at least at the table having some of those conversations. Um, and so that's kind of the report where we're at today. There's some other things that are going on, but also at this time it's, there's enough information to pass along, but that's kind of an update. Um, I know that we finally got our COE budget figured out, our rural grant budget figured out. Thank you. Um, it's nice to be able to look at those um, budgets and know exactly where all the dollars were spent. We uh, handed in probably three weeks ago our uh, state report and actually did our application for this year's funding. and. And all of that went really smoothly. It was nice to have a very clean budget to handle them. So great job. Any questions? Okay. No, thank you for thank that you. update. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. You. Okay. We're going to do commissioner comments, and then we'll move into the rest of our action. So, Commissioner Fackrell, do you have any items to discuss? Uh, I just want to say we had a great, uh, great opportunity to be with the Lieutenant Governor, Deidre. And Hen Henderson. Henderson. <laughs> and uh, we went to four or five different places, um, all of them in different aspects of the county. We went to Hines. We went first to the to review the interchange, and she was quite impressed with what our hopes are and plans. Um, she also, we went down to uh, Hines Country Store and she got to meet the original owners of the store uh, which she was fascinated with and she says and she got to meet the current owners which is very very good for her and um, she got to have an ice cream and she got some of their salsa and from somebody that makes it here in the county and then we had we went from there up to the cement plant right mm -hmm. cement plant and uh, uh, she got a tour of that, and, or at least part of the facility, and uh, then we went back to the Warrior Risen Ranch. Warrior Risen Ranch, um, they got to see their whole facility and what we could possibly do to help them as a county, to help, um, help them with support. I mean, they're really grown well. Uh, she was very impressed with the fodder building that uh, actually is an alternative agricultural item to help s people with um, being able to feed their animals instead of having to have ground uh, to do it. And, uh, and then we went back to visit Deb's Spicy Pie and I think that was about it. Then we went back to Heinz. And so, and she would like to and I've been working on this. She would like to visit the Wasatch Peaks Ranch. So I'm working on that one. Have you heard if she's coming back for the rodeo? I have not. We did invite her back for, okay. the, for the fair and rodeo. So. And uh, we... Um, other than that, that's good for now. Okay. Commissioner McConnell. A um, couple of things on the airport. I did reach out to Wardell with respect to splitting the cost of the fuel surcharge. And 
Um, we've agreed to split that 50-50. I think they have some other items they want to talk about. I don't know that it's related to that project, but they wanted to schedule something later in the month with Commissioner Anderson and I, so we're going to get that on the schedule. Um, I made a similar proposal to the engineering group. Um, and I'm still waiting to hear back from them. And then um, I saw George, you walked in. So the airport advisory board is not suspended. We simply asked you not to meet again until September. We, we did want to get minutes updated and Julie didn't want to do that. And because she felt like they were suspended, I don't necessarily understand the connection, but to the extent that you have, she has minutes that have been approved. If we could get those passed on to the county so we can get them posted on the website, that would be very helpful. Okay. I know there are some that because we haven't met, haven't been approved. I'm not asking for those yet. So, okay, so you pass yeah, if you would. We have not been no, we just simply asked you not to meet <laughs> until September because you'd already held your first meet two meetings already. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Um, I just wanted to again reiterate. Oh, one other thing. Oh, Let me, ahead. sorry, airport. The the berm and the landscaping plan. I, I did ask Joe to put together a proposal. There's a potential grant um, for work at the airport. And I did tell him, you can reach out to the airport advisory board members in connection with putting together a, a spending plan for that grant so that we could get something submitted and get those funds collected. And I know we have at least two designs for that landscaped area out front. So. That's great. Good news. So you can Okay. Okay, um, I'll just share comments. Again, the visit from the Lieutenant Governor was excellent. Appreciate those were, that were involved with that. Um, and, and hopefully we'll see some, some good come out of that. We did have a good discussion on the interchange um, and several other things, road funding, the bridge in Croydon, et cetera. Um, this week is the Morgan County Fair and Rodeo. If you don't have your tickets to the rodeo, go get them on the county website because they're going to sell out, I'm sure of it. We sold out last year on Saturday night, so get early and get your tickets. Um, tonight, if, we, if you can get out of here quickly, in the next 15 minutes, the uh, special needs rodeo is starting. I invite you to go participate in that. Tomorrow night is an ATV rodeo. Um, and then Friday and Saturday night is the regular PRCA rodeo. So please uh, attend the county fair. We're, there's volunteers that have spent tens of thousands of hours cumulatively working on that. Over the last, we've been meeting since January, Matt and I with that group, and they put a lot of time and effort into that. So um, anyway, we'd invite everybody out to that, go spend some money, get some good fair food. So Mike, are we doing a bowl poker again? No, no, not that I've been told. Can I just add in okay. on that, and that, that's all I'd have too. Yes. Is um, there's opportunities to provide service still. They. They need some people to cover some gates and some ticket booths and things like that. I see that most of it's full except for Friday and Saturday. Um, we would love to see more participation from the Mountain Green Peterson area. Um, I, ha I didn't see a lot of people from down there, so if we could get them to hop on and come and do that with us too, I'd appreciate it. If, uh you need the link to sign up it's online get with matter I after we can get you that um, also if you do volunteer for every couple hours of volunteer time you get a free event ticket so there's some incentive to go volunteer for the county fair and Plus they're only fun. two to four hour shifts yeah so they're, they're not too bad okay cool well, can I Mr. Anderson oh. on that same thing um, we did try to represent the the commissioners in the county uh, parade I was kind of disappointed that we did not have more bystanders or people out in the road, but I, you know, watching it, 
wasn't as populated as the uh, 4th of July, but it was, we had more participants in this one, and I thought it was very good. Very, very good for the fair. Certain more participants that were parading? Parading, oh. yes, yes. More participants parading, and um, one other thing before Jared gets to speak. Vista Works is going to be here. The rest of their team will be here this week to experience the fair and all the fair activities, but they would like to meet with us commissioners if we possibly could do it on Thursday evening, 4 o'clock-ish or 5 o'clock, either one. So let me know. Okay. Will you send an email or text out sure. all of us on that? Okay. It's perfect split the difference and do it for 4.30? .30? Good idea. Okay. Commissioner okay. Anderson, do you have any comments? Uh, no. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. Okay. Um, we've had a little bit of an interesting meeting just time-wise because we have some constraints with the public hearing that has to take place at 6 o'clock. So we've been bouncing a little bit around on our agenda for those who are just joining us. Um, Mr. Young, are you here? He's here, Jake. Awesome, Jake. Would you like to, let's start with that item, or, or move to that item, action item number one, Mr. Young, discussion decision nine line conditional use permit. Good evening, I'm Jake Young, a planning consultant helping Morgan County. Um, also been reviewing the Nine Springs application, so when, when that comes before me, comes before you, see me then. So I've been working with Garrett and Bailey and Josh on that. Uh, do you want me to go through all of the maps in the background that the Planning Commission saw or just provide a summary? of the Planning Commission recommendations and uh, a brief overview. I think from my perspective, a summary and overview is okay, but if there are commissioners that have other questions, certainly. We have, we have all the maps and all the information in our okay. packet, so we've been able to look through that um, prior to the meeting. And we have the, the notes and minutes from the commission, or excuse me, the Planning, Planning Commission, Commission, yes, meeting. Um, so yeah, if you want to give a, a summary and then we'll ask any questions we might have. Okay, great. Um, so the, the proposed, uh, the conditional use permit is of course for two hangars and then helipads on land owned by the county at the airport. Uh, it would be in phase two of, of the airport, so it's not within the phase one master plan. It's outside of that. Um, it is in the commercial buffer zone and also in the airport overlay zone, which is kind of which dictates the land use and the conditions for the use of the hangars. Uh, it is compatible with both zones, and um, and it is recommend it was recommended for approval by the planning commission. Of course, the county commission will make that decision. Um, some of the additional requirements by the Planning Commission are uh, a lighting plan with downward lighting, so not to interfere with neighbors, uh, a will serve letter from the water provider, uh, landscaping plan, um, as you were just discussing, and then uh, a trash enclosure uh, with a six foot wall, which is typical. Um, civil engineering plans uh, be updated. And so the applicant provided civil engineering plans, and then there was a review done and red lines provided, and then updated plans have come back. And so we're just in the process of, of staff working with uh, engineering to get those plans correct. And then I do want to kind of verbally mention, in your notes, there was a condition, and this was actually removed by the Planning Commission. So I'm, saying, I'm providing a, a verbal correction that 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 phase two is not was not does not need to be completed as a requirement it, it certainly is a good recommendation but but the planning commission did not actually require that even though it was in in the notes here so that was item six right yep that's item okay. six and so i just think that needs to be 
uh, noted noted that uh, that the planning commission we we did bring that up and 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 considered it but uh, it's not the applicants duty to do that. that that's something that the airport needs to well take and care just of. to just to be clear isn't this application for the entirety of the phase two area I think it is the majority of it I I don't know I'm not the the airport expert I think it is also I don't think we have any other area on the airport that could be developed. Right. And so I think this is the remaining balance. So if you, the concept of a, gen, a master plan is a general <laughs> designation of the appropriate land uses. We've already demonstrated compliance with the zoning. And so if you have a f more specific site plan in front of you, I don't, I don't know that we need to, to do that. So, uh, the, the county ordinance does call for an FF, FFA letter uh, that was received. Um, uh, I even called the FFA just to verify a few things and go over that. And they were very, they were familiar with what's being proposed and, and had no issue with it. Bailey, just for your information, it's not a 9,600 acre hangar. It's right there on that page, right there, right where your cursor is. Yeah, yeah it's not square that. feet. Yeah, it's square feet. <laughs> That'd be a big hanger. Yeah, I don't think the airport's that big. Definitely not. Also, commissioners, in the lease, section three G, the last sentence says, "Phase two of the airport master plan is accepted by the county as outlined in Exhibit B." And so we're kind of just making. We're saying this phase, is phase two. two. This is phase two, and it'll have the plans and drawings for for nine line. So it's, 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 as it's part okay. of our as part of our lease, they're just kind of incorporating it. And I don't know if we need to change that, but that was something that. Um, Commissioner McConnell and I had discussed when we were working on the lease. Okay. And I just want to know for certain also why you're doing it. The property lies west of the Morgan County Airport. How's that? Isn't that kind of east? Because west would be Browning's. And where they're wanting to put is on the east side. Hmm? Right here in the in its description. She's almost there now. It's under staff responses, property layout. You got under 8-5C-3, use regulations. And under the staff responses, property layout, it says the property lies west of the Morgan County Airport. It's, it's within the Morgan oh, yeah, County that's Airport. Yeah, I, I yeah. put yeah. within the... It's within the Morgan County yeah. Airport instead of west. Okay. So, because the rest of it doesn't have any east on there at all. It's north, south, and west. So, just to let everybody know, it's not on the west side of the, of the, of the, of the airport. So. Uh, is Trista here? I am. Um, Applicants here, if you would like to. And I believe Buster is, he's actually on a firefighting assignment in California, but I believe he is able to attend. He should be on the team. He's on the team. Is he there? Okay. So if you'd like to hear from the applicant, okay. um, they're available. Any questions from staff before we move to the applicant? Or poor staff, I mean? That's good. I would ask on, on the page two of the application or the staff report it talks about removing condition two seven and modifying condition three have those been done already and what's left is one through six yes okay all right, all right. thank you just <laughs> just wondering six is condition seven i removed condition three and then it changed to six and i forgot to remove condition seven so okay. now it's condition six so that one still needs to be removed so it should be one through five Right. Yes. Correct. Perfect. That makes sense. Okay. Let's hear from the applicant then. 
Now, this is Buster here. Can, can you folks hear me across teams? We sure can. Can you hear us okay? Yep. You guys are loud and clear. Thanks. I uh, wanted to thank the commission and staff for helping us navigate this process and allow me to attend virtually. Um, one other errata, I think, is an errata um, in your paperwork there on page four of the application under roads and access towards the top. I don't think that's accurate either. And we caught the other one that uh, uh, Commissioner Fackrell found as well with the west versus the east. But uh, I don't think we're, our access is not cotton with Commercial Street. It's Willow Creek. So. Yeah, it's Willow Creek. Okay. Sorry, I didn't catch that one for you, Buster. Um, but everything else um, from our review looked great. As you know, on May 3rd, we introduced the Nine Line Aviation Center project to the Commission. And I'm happy to review or refresh any of the planning concepts if you'd like. Trista has the most recent PowerPoint file with her um, if you want to project anything there. More recently, last month, we received the unanimous recommendation of the Planning Commission Nine Line uh, tonight hopes to accomplish two objectives. Um, First, obviously, we're seeking uh, final approval or a decision on the conditional use permit application. And secondly, we hope to learn the next steps of the process, particularly with the execution of a land lease. Um, regarding the CEP, uh, the, it sounds like you guys have covered it that the Planning Commission recommended approval while deleting two of the eight um, permit submission requirements. And, just to quickly acknowledge the remaining six, we will ensure compliance. We've already complied with the FAA Part uh, 77 letter, which uh, didn't make tonight's paperwork. It was um, put in, in place for um, the one that you guys just talked about and deleted the Phase Two construction standards, and then uh, and then the Post Gardener Engineer review that's uh, been completed as well, waiting review as you've discussed. All the other stuff, lighting, water, will serves all that at the landscaping, at building permit stage, we'll make sure we comply. And then referencing our second objective tonight, uh, moving forward, the land lease. Um, together, Nine Line and the county attorney landed upon a modified standard airport land lease template. Uh, a separate land lease covers each of Phase A, the Nine Line hangar, and Phase B, what we're calling the proposed U.S. Forest Service hangar. The main differences between the two leases is price and acknowledgement that the Forest Service will have inputs to final specifications and construction timelines. Um, we've been getting advice and counsel from James Ebert, the economic development uh, consultant, and he's conveyed to us that the proposed graduated pricing scheme had been discussed to some degree with some of the commissioners, but we're unsure of next steps to get the commission an opportunity to review the lease language and pricing. So we're 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 hoping to get uh, pointed in the right direction on next steps. Okay. Perfect. And then la lastly, um, we wanted to we wanted to know if it was appropriate to comment on the. Uh, the controversial issue and we've been receiving conflicting information about which is water and um, I don't know if that's uh, that would be the last thing I would mention as the applicant tonight but I don't know if it's appropriate at this stage uh, of the uh, proceedings I'd say go ahead yeah yeah go ahead if, if you'd like to discuss the water Okay, um, I'll make it quick. I, I uh, prepped something, I'll just read real fast. We assume that the commission, along with the water board, comprise the final decision authorities. Again, we're learning all these processes. After updated discussions with the Cottonwood Mutual Water Company manager as recently as yesterday, our understanding is the remaining airport water shares were calculated as sufficient for the indoor use of all hangars beyond row CC, including both the final GG row and Nine Lines company hangar, what we're calling phase A. It was confirmed through both emails and with the manager, the water manager, that Nine Lines company hangar was in fact included in future water use allocation and calculations. The Nine Line hangar water requirement is just like that of a new 60 by 60 hangar. In other words, just a bathroom and a utility sink. Our speaking out is important because at the July 14th Planning Commission, a member of the community represented on the YouTube recording that, quote, 
the county doesn't own water for Nine Line right now. And that quote, in the past, they never would have approved that many that many hangers with that amount of water, but they did, end quote. The water company manager stressed to Nine Line yesterday that all airport water shares had been planned for indoor, indoor use only and nothing had been calculated for outdoor use. In fact, he stated yesterday that for an outdoor application, he had no way of knowing how much water would be used and there was likely risk of going over the total airport water allocation. Separately, we understand that when it comes to our phase, what Nine Lines call them phase B, the constructing of a U.S. Forest Service hangar, it is more likely than not that we will have to work with the Gardner development team to secure another water share. This, of course, adds significantly to cost. An extra $20,000 to us is more palatable for our small company after we've secured the Forest Service's commitment. So we're talking right now just about the Nine Line Company hangar. At both Airport Advisory Board and Planning Commission meetings, we have noted the concerns of our neighbor regarding the landscape buffer. Until now, we've refrained from publicly debating with our neighbor. At this time, however, we would ask the Commission and the Water Board to consider prioritizing water for the Nine Line hangar over outdoor irrigation. We ask that five factors be considered. One, long ago, water shares were brought to the airport for development. 100% of the builders of new 60 by 60 hangars benefited from that advanced planning and were not required to bring their own water. Two, the water we're discussing is treated potable water. Given drought and other climate factors, it seems unwise to use culinary water for landscape purposes as opposed to using untreated secondary water. Three, we believe it's unfair to leverage Nine Line's current development efforts against some enforcement action of a 17-year-old agreement with an unrelated developer. We received a copy of the 2005 Babcock Agreement and it states, quote, Buffer to be constructed within a reasonable period of time, but not later than when airport development encroaches within 200 feet of Willow Creek Road, end quote. This contractual time limitation has long since passed based on the very existence of the AA, BB, and CC rows of hangars. Four, after talking to airport users who were here during the past 17 years, trees were in fact planted on the constructed berm but most since died. This raises a number of rhetorical questions. Who gets to decide the design, species, and other factors that constitute the fulfillment of this dated buffer agreement? Was the 2005 agreement in fact honored with a tree landscape buffer, but due to lack of maintenance since has died off? Whatever future landscape is placed on the burn, who is responsible for maintaining it? Will the county hire and pay a third party to sustain this landscape in perpetuity? If the landscape dies off at some future date again, who is responsible for replacement? Number five, the 2005 constructed berm is not located near or even in the same airport phase as Nine Line's site plan. Our site plan is directly across from open space and not at all adjacent to residential properties that were the very reason to mitigate the aesthetic impacts. Talk of extending the burn to phase two has since arisen and serves no residential purpose as it's next to open space and not homes. To wrap up our water comments, we feel like our project has been unfairly put in the crosshairs to enforce somebody else's buffer agreement. As a community stakeholder, our recommendation on the buffer would be zero state or a decorative wall that requires no water and little maintenance. If neither of those options are viable, then we would recommend wait until all construction is complete to scope out landscape water requirements that encompass all the landscape that will be on the airport in, in its final stage. We respectfully request that the Commission and Water Board consider the merits of our project, our investment in the community, the appropriate use of potable water, and per the opinion of the water company manager, allow the remaining airport allocation be used on the Nine Line Company hangar. Thanks for allowing that comment, and, and from the applicant's point, nine line is done. Thank you, Buster. We appreciate that. Any questions from the commission? So I'm just wondering, George, was that the water comment you wanted to make, or was it in relationship to that? I have a little bit more. I don't know if you need all the detail, but I'm going to say more words if you'd like. 
if you'd like. If that's okay, Mr. Chair. <laughs> so I'm George Souza. I'm the chairman of the Airport Advisory Board. Um, I could read the emails, the, the letters that I have, but everything, all that we've worked for over the past two to three years, all of our planning included Buster in getting water. All the approvals include Buster in getting water. Um, <clears throat> and even the invoice that Joe has paid. One of you signed it, I think it may have been Commissioner Anderson. It's been paid and it, does, it includes nine lines. So everything that we have done so far includes nine line in getting water. So that, that half share of water, in our minds, that's nine lines. That's, Thank that's you. all I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions from the commissioners for the applicant? Um, no, I, this isn't necessarily a question. I, I, I'm committed to getting the landscape buffer done. Uh, the decorative wall is an interesting concept as well, but <laughs> but in terms of getting the buffer, I do believe it was originally installed at one point. I mean, there's clearly a berm there. Um, there are some, uh, very few trees that have survived, but there are a couple that have made it. And I think it was installed and it was done. It's fallen into what I'll characterize as general disrepair. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not sure that a, a berm's necessarily the best way to go forward, but I do believe that it, if we do landscape it, it should be an Xeriscape, X-E-R-I, I know I don't want to say zero, Xeriscape <laughs> landscape, um, and that we ought to endeavor to utilize a secondary water source for that. And so that all made sense to me from my perspective. One of the comments I have on it too is that there are other sources of water that we've been reviewing. It's a secondary water, it's not culinary water, and but right now because of the conditions and the cost to put one in, I think we need to wait, like Buster mentioned, wait until it's been developed out. And then once it's developed out, then we can work on landscaping for the, whatever airport we need for everything within the airport. Well, and that would also help you identify what the water requirement is. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I think there, there's no intention, in, as far as the commission goes, of holding up Buster's development based on the water discussion. That's right. What we've talked about tonight. So. Okay, um, Garrett, do you want to talk a little bit about the next steps? So, right now, this evening, we're talking about the conditional use permit. We do still have two leases that that we need to address and get taken care of. Those are not on our agenda tonight, so we won't be voting on those. Um, however, we, we could ratify those at the next meeting. Right. So the both leases have language that say this lease will be executed only after the CUP is approved. So the CUP gets approved tonight. Um, they have been circulated uh, with those distinctions that Buster mentioned, uh, indicated. One... Um, that I included in the email that the Buster didn't mention was with the GSA standards that we've added that Buster just just for your information and I don't know maybe I didn't send the final leases to you so I'll make sure I get that done if you haven't seen it but those are the three you know the cost the the timing of the Forest Service building as far as deadlines and then the GSA standards to allow the Forest Service to do whatever the federal regulations allow for that in addition to the other outlined uses. And so as far for for Buster, the process here, uh, if the Commission approves the CUP tonight, then that's met the obligation of the lease and those are circulated and I believe that they'll be be ratified hopefully in the next day or two and then um, by the Commission and then they'll come back to the next Commission meeting for formal um, ratification but um, that wouldn't prevent you from moving forward and then of course the next step would be building permit and moving right. forward with the project itself so do you have any questions Buster for us no, sir that was Exactly what I was looking for, and, and thanks. Okay, excellent. 
Okay, commissioners, if there are no more questions, we'll look for a motion on item number one. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the nine line conditional use permit application number 22.003 for property located at 38806 West Willow Creek Road in the Morgan County Airport based on the findings and with the conditions listed in the staff report dated August 2nd, 2022, deleting therefrom condition number six. I would recommend further that we approve the nine line site plan as the lower clay case master plan for the phase two of the airport. Uh, it doesn't appear to me that the, um, there is a definition, there's no definition of what the airport master plan is and I don't believe it's a part of the county master plan generally so that's why I'm using the lowercase master plan and further subject to final approval of the two separate lease agreements by the county attorney and county commission. Perfect. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve a nine line conditional use permit with the conditions noted previously. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. All right. We will now move to our public hearing portion of the meeting, now that it is after 6 o'clock. Uh, this is a public hearing um, and discussion decision on a budget amendment to the Morgan County 2022 budget. This was previously heard uh, at our last meeting. We made these adjustments. There were some changes that need to be made to some of the account numbers based on what our accounting firm has, has noted. And so we, um, earlier in tonight's meeting, avoided the previous approval. And we're now looking for approval on resolution CR-22-05. No. Leslie, do you have any comments to share with the us? The only question I have is what did you decide on the airport manager wages? Uh, can I make point of order for a minute, Mike? Yeah. In reality, we already approved CR-22-5, but now we're on CR-22-7, which is the budget resolution. No, so we the, did 2204. The one that you approved before was for the first quarter. Right. This is for the second quarter. Right, that's what I'm saying. This yeah. one here yes. that we're discussing is, is not 2205. It's 2207. Yeah. It's 2207. Yes. This one replaced 2204, which was last quarter. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, go ahead now. <laughs> We, we yeah, signed, you guys sent to me something where we signed with respect to the airport manager an indication that he was to be paid hourly based upon hours reported. That's the only approval we have. You need to call Joe and work out whatever the overpayment or underpayment is, but that's the only thing that we have. And, and if we have to change that, then you and know. And there's no we have hourly wage, it. right? No, currently no. So we're we don't really well, know. Well, figure to out figure out what the what I think's probably happened is that instead of paying him on a monthly basis, you're paying him twice a month. Right. And I I think that you're <laughs> yeah. you're instead of pay, and you're doing that on monthly hours. So figure the hourly rate on that basis. So and it, it he's a part time person, and I think he. He estimated that he works at a maximum of 40 hours per month. Yeah. So when you prepared the budget, you didn't. You only budgeted what eight thousand dollars for his wages. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. okay I'll you give you another. Alt so divide that remember? amount by um, for 40 hours per month. 480. Well, what? he's already been paid for the whole year then. He may have been. <laughs> I'm not. What what what's confusing to me is once we signed the policy, why it wasn't implemented. Yeah, that was before. I know it was before your time, but it was and your time, but it wasn't implemented. So at this juncture, just he's more than a reasonable person. <laughs> Let's call him and so figure out what's supposed month. to be done. Is yeah. what you said, right? That's that's what he told me. He okay. doesn't believe he 
ever exceeds that. Now that's an average. Okay. Right. There are times where he spends more. Okay. Do you want to take that part out until we can get that resolved? Everything yeah, let's take that out, out and get it resolved, and then we'll you. make whatever budget adjustment we need to okay. do. And that would make sense that he's been paid for the whole year because we're paying him twice as often as we right. should. Right. Okay. So we're we're just eliminating that section. It yes, I'll like take that out. Okay. But everything else is what we discussed last time. Do you have any questions? I do not. I don't because I asked him earlier. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, right. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the public meeting and convene a public hearing. Okay. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the public meeting and convene a public hearing. Again, this public hearing is for a budget amendment to the Morgan County 2022 budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're now in public hearing. Seeing no public um, comments, I look for a motion to move out of public hearing and back into the public meeting. So moved. Second. second. Okay, motion Jared, and a yeah. second. Jared got that one. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I look for a motion on uh, resolution CR 22-07. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. oh, sorry. Is it your intention to discuss the Coma Springs conditional use permit tonight? Yes. Uh, yes, but that won't be till later in the meeting. Okay. Yep. Do you want public comments now or at that time? So the public comment period was earlier in the meeting this evening. Um, there, this particular item, um, the conditional use permit, is not a public hearing item. So no, it's not. It's a it's an item that should have been addressed during public comment earlier in our meeting. Um, that took place about a little after five o'clock this evening. Were they here? I, no, no, I they, they here. were. So this were. public hearing that we're talking about right now is is specific to the budget. So yeah. we'll we'll close that and then maybe we can talk and see about reopening public. I know you weren't here earlier in the meeting. We can talk about that. Thank you. Okay, so. Do a roll call. This will be, yes, correct. This will be a roll call vote. Um, or no, no, and now no, I don't we, know that we have a motion. We, we don't have a motion. motion yeah. Sorry, we're looking for a motion. <laughs> I move that we. Uh, no language on this here. Uh, that we adopt, adopt resolution CR 22 07 without the airport questions that we had. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt resolution CR 22-07 resolution of the Morgan County Commission adopting amendments to the Morgan County 2022 budget with the removal of the airport uh, section, airport fund balance section. All those in favor of, excuse me, this will be a roll call. Just one question on the motion. So on our agenda, it's 2206. Is this the old agenda that was printed here? That's the that's the change of this one, right? And that, yeah, you're right. That was the oh, action oh, item. That was the action item. Oh, this is the one we're on now. Discussion decision. It doesn't actually have the Okay, the so but it's 2207. Okay, 2207. the 2207. All right, thanks. Yeah. So I think we're good agenda-wise. Okay, this will be a roll call vote. Commissioner Fackrell? Aye. Commissioner McConnell? Aye. I vote aye. Commissioner Anderson? Aye. And Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Okay. It's unanimous and motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody here from Golden Hill Estates. No. Are you planning on, on doing that one? No. Okay. No, they were, they were supposed to. I failed to get them the staff report to let them know that they were going to be on the commission meeting. Last week was crazy. And okay, so maybe they weren't aware of their... Yeah, I don't think they were aware of this item on for tonight. Okay. If you guys want to talk about it, you can. I don't know. Do you, do you have questions for them? Uh, you know, I don't have any questions for the applicant myself. Do any other commissioners have questions for the applicant? 
I don't. No. Okay. Well, in that case, let's move to item number four. Discussion decision, Golden Hill Estates, phase one, final plot. You mean on the Como Springs or on the... No, this is no. Uh, Golden Hills Estates. Uh, okay. I do have some... You do have questions for yeah. them? Yeah. Oh. I do have some questions for For the them. applicant or for staff? For staff, but okay. I've already asked her the question. And I have the answers. Good. Okay. okay. So for the sage grouse, there is, on lot six, there is a management area already designated. Okay. Um, and for the Mormon Trail, I talked to Debbie, and as far as our code goes, I don't believe there's anything in our code that um, would protect that trail because it's not recognized as a trail, as a historic trail with the state. So there, I don't know that there's much we can do about that. And this is Debbie who? Sessions. It's Debbie Sessions. Because mm -hmm. um, I would like to actually look further into that uh, because there's some historical things that we should not you know, that we should try to preserve, especially when we're trying to bring about different things within the county. And I'm just kind of worried that we, and I know it's their property right, but there's, if this is a major national trail that they used to come on, or that they used to come on, I'm just wondering if we destroy it, are we destroying everything? I mean, sure, the reservoir did. It, it destroyed everything. But, um... I don't know. I'm just I'm just curious if we can do anything to preserve any of that or not. If and it's historical, why line. doesn't the state recognize it as a historical trail? Because I don't think they've been into historical stuff until the last year or so. And I mean, what they about have the Mormon Trail. The, the Mormon Trail is there, and we're trying to uh, develop the Mormon Flats and having the trail basically follow that trail all the way through there. I don't know if we can do anything or not. It's just one of those things I haven't been able to finish and get done. So they, they have recognized Pony Express trails in other locations in the state. And, I mean, if what, if what you're saying is you want to wait to talk to the applicant about whether they would voluntarily do that, is that what you're saying? Well, that would be one of my questions. I was hoping they would be here so I could ask them. Okay. And I mean, that's my question. I think we could ask them to voluntarily do that. Yeah. I don't know that we have anything in our code currently that would require them to. to right, preserve. and and then that's something we need to maybe possibly look at future, future, if we can get something into the code, if we want to do anything like that. I'm not saying we have to. I'm just saying it would be maybe something we could consider, talk about, and discuss. So. Kelly raised her hand. Yeah, did you have a comment? I just have some information. Um, a few years ago, the Historical Society was working with Linda Smith. Talked to them, and that was at a different time with the owners, and they were willing to develop around that. Then the county denied the application, and so I'm not sure if they would be willing to go forward. We asked the church if they would be interested in pursuing something there, and they were not interested in Lately, the state has been, the state parks has actually been requesting some, I mean, they've been coming to me and asking, what can we do to preserve that area? So now I'm working with them to try to see what we can do. So before this, you know, I don't know if anything can be done because it was done before we got here. So just a question, if anything can be done, maybe not. Any other questions for staff? Garrett has a question. Oh. I was just going to say, if you'd like to ask the applicant a question, we should probably give them notice and give them a chance to respond. Agreed. Which would mean a motion to postpone this item until our next meeting. Right. Correct. I move that we postpone item number four until the next meeting, until we have a chance for the talk with the applicant. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to postpone item number four, Golden Hills Estate Phase One Final Plat, until our next meeting on August 16th. August 16th. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Thank you. Noted. Did you note that vote? 
We have one. Three in favor, one opposed. Four in favor, one opposed. I'm sorry, four in favor, one opposed. <laughs> Not everything is unanimous in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner, I was Mr. Wilson. Wilson. Okay. Um, I think, generally speaking, we would we would do one public comment period and we would move on. Our agenda has been a little bit weird tonight because we had this public hearing that had to be after six o'clock. So we're going to change things up if it's okay with the commission and allow um, those who maybe have come after the public comment period, we'll do a second public comment period. I'm fine with it. So I'm gonna move to that. We'll ask you to come up to the podium, state your name, give you three minutes to address the commission. This is a you talk to us kind of a thing, so we won't do a lot of interacting, but we'll certainly listen. And then uh, after that, we'll move back to our regular meeting. All right, well, thank you for letting me speak. I apologize for not uh, knowing your Timeline. You're just fine. <laughs> um, Please state your name for the record, if you would. Pardon me? Please state your name for the record, okay, if you my would. My name is Terry Lawrence. Okay. Um, I live adjacent to the Como Springs property. My wife, Dora, is right there. The um, reason I want to speak tonight is we are against this conditional use permit for Como Springs and their proposed expansion. And we're basing this opinion on, um, we feel they are not good neighbors. They're very inconsiderate and disrespectful to their adjacent property owners. Now this in our modern society, might, that might sound a little silly or outdated, but we take it seriously. Can I, can I just ask you, adjacent to it where? I'm trying to think of where you're so, at. We live directly above the Como Springs Pond. Across from the Wilkinsons? Correct. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yes. So, over the past 25 years, um, ever since the Heiner family sold Como Springs, there's been a succession of owners, and it's pretty much been the same old pattern with every one of them. And, and this current owner is really no different. After they buy the property, they make big promises, they have big plans, whatever. And so, they make, a, you know, a few improvements here, do some demolition over there, and, and then things slow down, nothing happens. Nature takes over again, and they're right back to where they were before. Another owner comes in, okay, it's the same thing all over again. So then, three years ago, they decided to dredge the Como Springs Pond. And during that process, they brought in four really loud diesel-powered water pumps, and they operated those things for seven months. Let me restate that. Seven months, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And these things were loud. In fact, my wife and I had to start sleeping in another part of our house just to get some sleep. And so I complained, you know, to whoever I could, Sheriff's office, um, county. The owner, I called the owner several times. Finally, when I tried to pin him down on a timeline, his arrogant response was, well, you know, I'll be done when I'm done. How about if I, how if I buy you a set of earplugs? So that was going nowhere. So then after the dredging was done and they allowed the dirt to dry, you can imagine there's quite a big pile they decide to move that dirt up to the uh, rise, which is just above Cam Sergeant's property. And during that process, there was no mitigation at all in dust control. And so, so we're at the point now we want to put in a big RV park. Okay, does the county actually have a definition of an RV park? Right now, that place is just a de facto mobile home park with absolutely no limits whatsoever. There have been people living there from over the years for months, even years at a time. So, there's several issues that come up. 
Noise is one big problem. Light emission. I know when the two dealerships across the freeway were built, there was an issue there. And they, I know they were forced to install some shielding to help out the neighbors behind them. Then you've got animal control. What are the, what are the limits going to be on animals? Over the years, we've had a lot of their dogs running loose, coming up on our property. We even had some of their guests coming up on our property, thinking we're some kind of a trailhead or something. Then there's the issue of firearms. How are they going to control that? Over the years, there's been issues with drugs. How about illegal encampments? Who knows? And what are their liability is going to be in relationship to their customers. Now this is a pretty aggressive uh, enlargement. If you want to get a visual impact of what it might be, take a drive down Interstate 84 and look at the new Riverside uh, RV park down there. Now that park is 90 spaces. I know they want to do 72 up here. And that one on Riverside isn't even completely developed yet. I think you're around 70 right now. So as you're driving down 84, you can see this giant sea of white and silver RVs. So another issue is at the last um, planning commission, I thought I understood that they want to make the main entrance to this park off of 100 South. Well, that to me sounds a little outrageous, even dangerous. You want to have that many trailers driving up 100 South, a residential neighborhood? Keep in mind, Morgan Elementary School has a major drop-off and pickup point on 100 South. It just sounds irresponsible to me. Now, um, I had another point I was going to make here. Oh, um, this issue of so much traffic come up, up 100 South for a major development, I think there's um, a precedent that, that was set here years ago. Uh, Round Valley was going to have a major expansion up in their area. At the time, the only access to Round Valley was up 100 South. The neighborhood was pretty upset about that, and I believe that is one of the things that prompted the building of the new bridge over the river and the new fair, the um, fairgrounds parkway. So I think that's another big issue to consider. So anyway, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to us. I just want to pick up on a couple of points I wrote down. My name's Dora Lawrence. Um, I'm concerned about illegal encampments and um, I notice on their list of re resort rules they're saying that the tenant or the clients, customers can stay for 90 days. Does that mean they have to leave the property in 90 days? We've, we've just talked about how there's been people there for years and on that so-called RV parking lot. So are they going to allow musical slots? So if I'm in slot 10, can I move to slot 72 and still be there another 90 days? And then when I look at some of these things, even the pet requirements, I notice that we worry about dogs because they can tend to be aggressive. But we've had many cats. What about rabbits? We've had rabbits. What about if they decide to bring a boa constrictor? Now that may sound silly, but I know these kinds of things go on where people will come in with something wrapped around their neck. So. If the county allows it, and I understand that we're looking for revenues from the taxes gained from this, 
But if they allow it, what enforcement, what ordinances are there for private land like this? It's not like having commercial street, having an ownership there. These are people who have private land, just like I do. And are there really ordinances and controls that can be put in place to help criminal activity, to help the safety for our children? Um, those are things that really weigh heavy on my mind, is what kind of what kind of ordinances do we have? If I call the sheriff, how enforceable is it for that sheriff to help me? Um, it doesn't seem over the past 30 years that there's a lot of ordinances out there that a sheriff can say, I can go down there. I have been told I can't do anything. So while we may want to go forward with this, for the goodness of Morgan, what do we have in place to help our sheriff or to help me make a phone call to someone, even a manager full time on that site? There is no one full time on that site that we're allowed to call. So as you think about it, please think of those things the safety of my property, but also the other people. We have older people that live around us. So that's what I would appreciate this council doing. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I actually don't see the applicant here for this she one. She is on point. <laughs> She's just running late. Okay. Um, how late is she running? Uh, another 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Frankly, I'm not inclined to wait. No, that's fine. So, uh, but what I, I do want to make a little bit of comment for just the benefit of the public. When we're talking about a conditional use permit, I think it's important that people understand what that means. So a conditional use permit by, by state law is an allowed use under certain conditions. This means that the county does not necessarily have the ability to say, you cannot do this. It means the county has the ability to say, you can do this under certain limitations and restrictions. Okay? And so when we talk about a conditional use permit, we're talking about what conditions do we want to apply to this. It's typically a business that requires a conditional use permit in different areas of the county. So we talk about things like what conditions should apply here. And typically those conditions are related to health, safety, welfare. Uh, they might be related to noise or dust, which are things that were brought up in the public comment period. And, and all valid things and things that we need to consider. Um, but I bring that up just so that it can be understood by the public that that's what we're talking about when we do a conditional use permit. It's not a vote of, yes, we want to do this or no, we don't. It's a vote of, we're going to do this with these conditions and we can outline those conditions. So my suggestion to those members of the public who um, have an interest and, and would like the county to consider certain conditions is to put together a list of conditions that you think would be appropriate to, to have discussed. Submit those to the commission. We'd be happy to review those. You can submit those through email um, or you could bring them to Julie and she could get them out to the commission. And then we can review those conditions. Now, again, they have to be conditions that we can legally apply, and they, and they have to be fair conditions to the applicant. Mm -hmm. But there are things that we could talk about and address. So that would be my suggestion. Gina's going to jump on Teams. OK. Does it need to be in the form of a letter? No, you could certainly come into a public comment period and say, hey, these are some things that I'd like you to consider as conditions for this. but. Um, it helps if we have something in writing, not just, you know, so we can consider it I'm in happy advance. To do that. I didn't know I could. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's something to be aware of. And, and the truth is, we get this a lot with conditional use permits of various types. People come and, and voice their concerns, and that's a great thing. But okay. And is there a time limit on it? I mean, why could you do it in the week? Well, <laughs> If we in, in theory, <laughs> you want to do it before it ever gets to this stage. Oh. Um, 
<laughs> but, but, I understand. But yes, um, yeah. The sooner the better in the process. And the conditions should be designed to mitigate reasonably anticipated detrimental effects from the proposed conditional use. That's the applicable land use standard. Um, so, I'm I'm if you're ready for questions. Sure. I see that we removed the condition number three, which imposed an overall 45-day limit in a calendar year. Um, there is in the rules and regulations a 90-day consecutive limit stay, but as pointed out, that could be, you know, January 1st through March 1st, and then March 3rd through, right. <laughs> you know, be. July, and I'm... I don't know what the applicant's intent is there. This is um, a private recreational re resort. It is not intended to be a de facto mobile home park, um, even if people move from space to space. I think this is supposed to be, and, and if you talk about it in terms of the economic development opportunity that the project is, there are different patterns of expenditure by people who are recreating here than are people who are living here. Um, I, I guess I would want to also, I think the dust control measure should be handled by the building permit, but I would want that to be clarified with respect to any site plan grading that there is a dust mitigation measure included in that. Um, so I, I don't know what it's just deleted in the staff report. Was that something the applicant requested that the planning no. commission recommended? The planning commission recommended it because in our code we have a, a specific section of our code that required or that um, states that there's a 90 day. Gina can touch on that. I don't know exactly where it's in code, but there's two conflicting codes. One says 45 and another says 90. And their um, agreement or their park rule says 90 days as well. So that's why they just deleted the 45. So whether it says it or not, though, in the in the code, we could impose this as part of the conditional use permit. We could say we want it to be a maximum of 45 days. Because if it's permitted under the code, then it's not a conditional use. Yeah. That, that's why you go through the conditional use. So, for example, going back to the airport discussion, if someone is going to do commercial activity in phase one of the airport and our code says you can't do commercial activity in phase one of the airport, then you have to go through a conditional use process to say, well, we're really not doing any further commercial, well, we are doing more commercial activity, but we're also going to retain the U.S. Forest Service and add the FBO. Then the, can the commission can look at it and say, okay, well, we think that that's a good thing for our county but we're going to put these restrictions on that can mitigate reasonably detriment you know reasonably foreseeable detrimental effects so Gina the question relates to the deletion of sorry <laughs> the, I'll put that on, it's not going to stay on um, relates to the deletion of the requirement pertaining to 45 day stays and I know that there's something in the applicants rules that speaks to 90 consecutive day stays correct so this is so there's the supplementary code and then there's the CUP code the Morgan County code requires a commercial campground to, to obtain a CUP Whereas the supplementary code, it would be pertain to a permitted use. And the conditional use code allows for 90 days. Whereas the supplementary code, if this wasn't a permitted use without a CUP, we would, you would refer to the supplementary code that allows only 45 days. Does that make sense? Your, your statement makes sense. The conflicting provisions don't make any sense to me. If it's a permitted use, why would we but allow a longer or shorter period shorter of time than under a conditional? That's the conflict with your code. 
Okay, can you tell me what sections? So the supplementary code, I don't have it right in front of me. Let me see if I can pull up. So is it under recreational vehicle courts and commercial campgrounds? Yeah, 8 6 26. Is it 6? 8 6? 8 6 26. Okay. And so where are we at? D11. D11. Is what I found on that one. No recreation of vehicles shall be allowed in the court nor camp user in the campground for more than 45 days in any calendar year, besides the approved common facility. I've got the conditional use code for recreational vehicle parks that has the 90 day requirement up on it. No individual space right? shall be used for minors. I can't read that far away. So, what's the code <laughs> reference? I got a term of them. Eight eight six dash twenty six fifty eight. Terms of rental. Term of rental. Yeah, term of rental. I think it was seven before. That one says thirty. Well, that says a mobile home oh, space. Sorry. This isn't a mobile home. You know, it, it is a recreational vehicle park. Right here. There is a difference. There, there is a difference in, in reference to how it's in order and within the code. And it does, the conditional use standard is for a mobile home park or and, and or recreational vehicle park. Um, but the term of rental that it that falls under is under the recreational vehicle park. I questioned that too, and I did. I did verify that under that code. It seemed like the concern wasn't as much as ninety versus forty-five. It was ninety moving one stall and starting the ninety days over again. Yeah, that's what it was. So if that code says that it's one calendar year, so that would prevent that if it was enforced, of course, which is sometimes an issue. Yeah. What, what are just talking about this code provision now, 88 6? There's a provision for guarantees that requires posting of a bond for maintenance of storage facilities, service facilities, and landscaping. Okay. Was there a, recommend, was there a recommendation for that? Uh, for, the, for a bond? Yes. I believe, I, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, a 10% bond? Is yeah, 10%. Right here. And then the, yeah. the improvement bond with the county as well. So let me, let me look at your condition, sorry. Condition number Oh, that, that's the warranty bond for improvements. Right. So, sorry, I've got to pull up the code. Yeah, that's the warranty bonds for improvements. So, this is under 886 subpart 7, C7, I guess. Adequate and reasonable guarantees must be provided as determined by the Planning Commission and Governing Body for permanent retention of open spaces and for the maintenance of roadways, storage facilities, service facilities, and landscaping resulting from the application of these regulations. Guarantees shall be in the form of a bond or a cash deposit in the sum to be determined by the Planning Commission, which form must be approved by the Governing Body and the County Attorney. The basis for providing assurance of compliance will be a management plan developed by the applicant and approved by the Planning Commission and Governing Body that will outline standards of operation, remedies for failure to comply with those standards, and a single responsible person or entity for its administration in dealing with the county. From my perspective, imposition of that requirement would go a long ways in alleviating the concerns of the residents expressed tonight. <laughs> Um, and it's 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 in our code. If we're 
if that's where we're at, I think we need to have that. Um, uh, can, sorry, can I ask, um, is it McConnell that's speaking? Sorry. Yes, it is. Sorry. I, <laughs> so can I ask what those concerns from um, public comment were? Um, yeah, one was a general lack of neighborliness and, and respon responsive to neighborhood concerns. There was some um, construction, I'll call it, associated with dredging the pond a number of years ago that resulted in, um, was it seven months? Seven months. Seven months of diesel generators running to uh, extract water from the pond. There was a lack of dust control measures when they were removing um, the dredged material from the pond. There was concern about um, the main access road being off of a um, public roadway serving a residential neighborhood. Um, a lack of full-time manager coverage and people to contact. Concern about the ability to enforce the conditions on, on a going forward basis. If that kind of generally summarizes them, I probably missed one or two. Okay. I mean, I, I could answer to several of those, but um, that's not what we're here for tonight. So as far as the bond goes, I don't, I mean, that would be determined from a, an engineer, I believe, to... Well, let's, let's be careful. It's the, under the code, it has to be done by the planning commission. And, and all I'm wanting to be, be make sure that the requirement that's stated in the conditions for approval relates to what would be a, a completion assurance for public improvements. Right. And, and that also has to be required, and that would be determined by the engineer. It's typically 110 to 120 percent of the cost of the public infrastructure improvements to be completed. But this requirement under guarantees in the conditional use section is a separate requirement with respect to a guarantee in the form of a bond or a cash deposit, and it relates to the maintenance of open spaces, roadways, storage facilities, service facilities, and landscaping, and it's to be determined by the planning commission. Okay and then approved by the governing body and the county attorney as to its form and amount. So I don't, I think we need to ad address that. Okay. Can, can I ask a question on this? If this is a recreational place, a recreational park, why would somebody want to stay there for 90 days? A lot of it is, um you have construction workers that are working, for example, on Wasatch Beach. That's a long-term um, project. And so um, currently we have maybe two or three um, individuals that are staying at the existing campground um, that work at for Wasatch Peaks or for Whitaker Construction, who is the contractor for Wasatch Peaks. So um, that would be what that is for. Um, 90 days would be for um, individuals who come to stay for the summertime or for, you know, for extended times to visit family. That would be the, the general uses is what we have seen. Now, we have had individuals that come and want to just live there indefinitely, and that's what we've tried to increase our prices so that that wouldn't happen any longer, that we wouldn't have... Um, you know, people that are there to live cheaply is, is what, it's not Section 8 housing, put it that way, and that's not the type of park that um, Mr. Mackey has chosen to build here. So the, the, the reason for 90 days would be to give the option for those individuals that come back to Morgan to visit their family or their grandkids, that type of thing. Okay, thank you. As far as the bond goes, we would have to we would have to talk about that with the owner and and come up with a reasonable. I thought that Wasatch that. Peak was a bad example. If uh, Wasatch Peak's not a ninety day deal, no, it's a twenty year. 
Well, there's a there's a growing right. number of people who are living in their RVs full. Time. So why would yeah. we want Wasatch Peak and workers living there? Well, and, and well, it's not. Sorry. It's not just Wasatch Peak workers. I mean, we've got. I mean, it's not the same individual all the time. They they rotate. These crews don't. They're not there for 20 years. They're there for a period of time to do a certain job. So it's not the, it, but the housing doesn't rotate. You're saying just the people. Correct. And this term of. The, do. Yeah, the housing does I think the term of rental, if it's the 90 days, it's the 90 days, but this term of rental in the conditional use section is no individual space in a recreational vehicle park shall be used by one individual recreational vehicle for more than 90 days consecutively, nor shall such space be rented or leased to any one individual for a period longer than 90 days in any one calendar year. And I don't think that latter portion is included in the conditions or the rules. Um, and I think my view of the intent of that is to say it's 90 days per year. You know, we, and that's the maximum. Uh, and if if this is the applicable condition as opposed to the 45, then I'm, I'm, I'm content with the 90 days. But I think I think we need to work on a couple of the conditions. And frankly, unfortunately, the one with respect to the bond requires a recommendation as to the planning commission as to the amount. And so I think we need to send this back for that recommendation. That's I, I know this has been a long time working through the process, um, although I don't know that it's been in our formal process that long. But, um, but I think, given the requirements of the code, I think we're going to have to send it back for a recommendation from the planning commission on that particular requirement. And it seems very clear that it talks about that management plan. Would that be something that you would want to already have in front of you? We've never had this before. So, so that way if you adopt the CUP, you know what the management plan has in it that addresses some of the specific issues, or would that be something you would wait till after and then maybe just formulate that? No, I think it would be good to come back with the actual application as part of the approval process. And the other portion that probably should be included of that is Section mm -hmm. 2 says required facilities. Um, and it says, Planning Commission shall not approve any application for a mobile home park, recreational vehicle park, or mobile home subdivision conditional use permit if the developer cannot provide required water supplies and facilities, waste disposal systems, storm drainage facilities, access or improvements, or if the developer cannot assure that the development will, will be completed within 12 months. So I think part of that management plan ought to be a timeline that says this is when we intend to complete this. Um, and I don't... You know, I don't know if 12 months is sufficient at this point, frankly, with supply chain issues, but it's something that ought to be addressed as part of that management plan is how is it going to be, you know, meet that requirement. So are they annexing into the city? No. No. No, and they do so have... So how are they getting water from the okay. city if they're not annexing the into city the city? The city has authorized them. I mean, they can get it through 100 South. They can get it through 100 South. I don't know exactly where they're getting it from. Um, but they're getting it. Um, the they're signing a will sort letter. Yeah. Yeah, the city they've, is signing a will sort Yeah, letter. they've already got that, or they're signing it for both the sewer and the water. Without annexation. Without annexation. Didn't they pass However, an ordinance that they would not do that anymore? I don't know, but they are trying to potentially annex it. That was passed after the application for services was submitted to the city. Of course it was. So it's one thing to annex into the city, but it's another thing to, if you have a water or sewer district, um, you need to adjust your boundaries, I guess. Do you, do you know, Gina, what their, their plans are there? Are they going to increase their size of their district boundary, or are they going to have a out-of-service agreement? What's the plans there? It's an out-of-service out of area agreement mm -hmm. is what they'll have. So they're, one of the purposes of this is to, is to loop their system. And so for, to loop their system from 100 South over to Commercial Street, it provides a, a loop there. Um, there is water services to the fairgrounds that will help with that, um, as well as the water down to the pickleball courts. 
um, but it, it's to help provide a, a loop service. So the city did offer, did submit or issue a wheelchair letter, um, and they have approved plans through the city to put in those services um, for this particular development to loop their services. So this was the annexation code um, as far as any services could be um, <clears throat> given from our city services outside of the service district. That, that code to act, and they would be, have to annex in order to do, to do that. Um, that was initiated after this application, but yeah, they. I, I know. They, I know. Ernie Durant initiated his application previous to that, and you guys denied that to him. The city did. The yes, city did. they did. I. I. I can't speak for the city. I'm just telling you what has transpired with this application. So you mentioned about the culinary water. What about the sewer? What's the plans for that? Morgan City. They're, they al they already currently have city sewer, so they just have to improve the lines within the campground. Oh, I didn't know that. Do they lift? Um, yeah, you know, it comes through uh, Hunter South, so through the Mink Farm, through Sergeant's Mink Farm, um, and then into the campground. I have a question for you, Gina. Have has uh, Grant gone and talked with uh, sergeants about their mink and the potential of any kind of problems uh, in their breeding seasons, or because mink are very erratic, and right. and if they can go and do anything to kill themselves, they will. I mean, seriously, that's what it is with mink, and so. And so, um, you know, have they gone and talked to savages or not? Or sergeants, no. I mean. There hasn't been any communication with the sergeants regarding their mink farms. Um, okay. The, the campground doesn't necessarily border the actual mink farms. There's quite a bit of, there's secondary water and then there's some mink farms. So it doesn't go right up against the mink farms. Right, but the, all the traffic that is going to be going down 100 south, uh, I am still not in favor of that, even though that's city property and if the city allows it, that's their problem. But um, I personally would still like to see them try to build it through our fairgrounds road to get to the park that way versus going up over 100 south. We've got too many children too much other, you know, I mean, it's a problem. And I've been right. I've been talking with Grant for a year and a half on this, and I've told him my concerns, but it doesn't seem to me like it's happening. I think eventually he would prefer to do a double bridge. It's just a very costly endeavor. I mean, you're looking at a few million dollars just to do a double bridge across the river. Um, and so the... the the compromise there was to go up to 100 south. Now, I mean, there is the option for them to go around through the fairground to 100 south off of, off of that option rather than through town and down 100 south to the neighborhoods. Um, that can be something that can be signed and signs can be put up for that directional access. So I, I, I believe Grant initially or eventually wants to flip the double bridge over because the access is so much better coming from the fairground. But the current bridge that is there doesn't meet the, the county requirement of 36 feet or 26 foot access. Okay. Well, I think I think as this goes back potentially to the planning commission, I think they ought to consider what something else some other kind of entryway into the park. And I know he may be mad at me for it, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, because if we're gonna bring back Como Springs, I'd like us to bring back Como Springs without a detriment to the community. It's understandable. Any other 
question. Okay. Any other yeah. questions or comments for the applicant? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I get it, but they're discussing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still have just to, and I apologize, this is, I haven't been involved with it like Commissioner Fackrell has, so. Um, just, just Gina, another, and I know you've got it in here on one of the comments, but I'm, I'm assuming that's a bad word to use, but that you're inside the floodway, that you're not going to have any change or any fill inside that floodway. Is that sound correct, or are you planning on doing just a uh, loma or cloma, or what? What are you planning on doing there? So the floodway will have um, RV sites in them. It will not have any um, well as it currently does. But it won't have any new build. It won't have any buildings. You can't build up any buildings in a floodway. Um, the floodplain um, goes. I can't remember how many feet. Um, it, it's close to the ditch um, is where the floodplain begins. And so, um, actually, it's, it's further in or further to the river than that. But they they've obtained all of the floodplain. They, 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 uh, they received a floodplain permit from the county, I believe. Um, I know he submitted that to Lance. Um, but they're, the buildings, the cabins are going to be outside of the floodplain. So they'll be up against the hill rather than anywhere near the river. Sorry, I wasn't talking about structures. I just mentioned fill. Oh, okay. I just mentioned fill. I didn't know if you were going to do any fill oh, or so roadway, roadway work. There shouldn't be any. Inside the floodway. Okay. Sorry, I mis I, I misunderstood you. No, we're good. I know they worked a lot with uh, Morgan City on moving all of the uh, water facility out of the floodplain uh, as far as um, floodway. Floodway, yeah. yeah. As far yep. as any of the, the pumps or so nothing could backfill from the flood. There was a flood back in the system, especially for the culinary. And so they had to carry right. that three or four times. So I think they've been very aware of the flood issues. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, we'll look for a motion on item number five. I need to recuse myself from this. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'll make a recommend, uh, motion that we, I don't know if this is the right word in this context, but re remand the Como Springs conditional use permit item back to the Planning Commission for recommended findings with respect to section 8-8-6 subpart C subpart 7 sub subpart 8 pertaining to guarantees for um, recreational vehicle parks and a requirement for a written management plan Second that. We have a motion and a second to send this item back to the Planning Commission um, for them to review sections of the code and a written management plan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And Commissioner Wilson abstained from that one, is that correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, motion passes. That brings us to thank you. That brings us to the end of our agenda. Commissioners, any comments or anything else before we adjourn? Okay. Motion right. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second.